I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. It's been 30 years, and he's just the kind of person that uh, any woman would want. He's always there. He's over-helpful. He's got a new job at uh, Lee's Catfish and Chicken Shack, and he's he's changed. It's like it's, something's not right, but you don't know what it is. He's always tired. Uh, but yet, if you're always tired, you're retired. So why are you going to work? You know, it's like it's a whole different person. And, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> it's just hard, because I know it's something's not right. <laughs> and I don't know what it is. That's why I just, I hope it's not true. <laughs> But I know it's something going on. <laughs> I don't know what I do. <laughs> I hope that it was maybe just a one-time thing. Did he realize he made a mistake? <laughs> but I don't know. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Virgil, age 69. A restaurant cook accused of serving up extra helpings to another woman. Investigation day one. Receiving the case briefing, agents set up a perimeter around the suspect's job as a cook for a catfish and chicken joint. Operatives are not surprised that a number of people frequent the establishment. However, what does pique the agent's interests happens inside the restaurant as the suspect, Virgil, sits at a corner table with an unknown female. The couple chat as the companion chows down on a meal of chicken. A short time later, the suspect escorts his dinner date to her vehicle. She gives him a quick kiss on the lips before getting into her car. Virgil walks back into work and his companion drives off, ending the day's surveillance. Investigation day four. After a few days of no progress on the case, agents catch a break when suspect Virgil walks out to the parking lot and meets with a female from previous surveillance whose identity is withheld. Greeting each other with a kiss and a hug, the two stroll, hand in hand, to a dimly lit area on the back side of the building. The pair get lost in the darkness, and about 20 minutes later, re-emerge. The suspect's duplicity is clear in this recorded phone call. Yeah, what is it I was just trying to find out uh, what was going on, that was all like that. You still busy? Yeah, I'm busy, and uh, I'll call you when I get to break. What time are you getting off? Before I get out of here tonight. Midnight? Yeah, midnight. Four hours? You know what? I'll just catch a, I'll catch a taxi one and I'll be home. I'll meet you at the house. Bye. I'm, I'm very upset. I love you. Bye. 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 Sometime later, the suspect walks his companion back to her vehicle with operatives noting the passion of the lovers as they kiss goodbye. The companion gets back into her car and drives off while Virgil returns to work. Investigation day five. For a second day in a row, the suspect recycles his excuse of having to work late. Unbeknownst to him, however, Ariel has professional eyes glued to his every move. Mobile units spot the suspect Virgil, close the restaurant, and then wait. A short time later, Virgil's companion from previous surveillance shows up. They greet each other with a passion born of elderly puppy love. Virgil and his unknown companion get into their separate vehicles, and they're followed to a super center where they park in an obscure area. Once both cars are settled, Virgil helps his lady climb into the back seat of his van. Approximately an hour later, the companion opens the van door in order to put her boots on. She adjusts her hair as Virgil cleans up any evidence in his family van. Hand in hand, Virgil escorts his girl back to her car. They make out by her car for a short while before the companion gets into the vehicle. Virgil leans in for a last kiss goodbye before shutting the door. He goes to his van and she drives off. And as Virgil drives back home to his faithful wife, 
Cheater's operatives head back to headquarters to prepare the report for Ariel's review. Coming up, the confrontation. With a dossier full of evidence, Ariel is contacted to view the findings. Fearing the worst, she pulls herself together before facing the truth. Ariel, my name's Clark Gable, I'm with Cheaters. I just wanna say thank you for coming out here today. So I understand you're in a 30-year marriage with your husband, Virgil. Yes. We conducted our investigation and came up with some very interesting findings. Are you ready to see those? Yeah, okay. I'm ready. Great. We conducted surveillance outside of Virgil's workplace. This unknown vehicle pulls up, that blonde female emerges, and that's when our detectives get this shot of them inside, sitting together, having a meal. Do you recognize that woman? No. Okay, well, a short time after, Virgil escorts her to the outside of the restaurant. He opens the door for her, exchanges a few words. She gives him a kiss. He and doesn't even walk he returns better. He to don't work. walk like that. And unknown female leaves. On this day, Virgil comes out of the restaurant, seen outside holding a bag of food on his cell phone. That same female pulls up in her vehicle. They both get into their vehicles. We see them leaving together. They then follow each other across the street to a super shopping center, park next to each other in the back. That's when we have Virgil here cleaning out his van. Back seat, closes the front door, shuts the side door, gets in on the other side with her. And what is she, a hooker? We're gonna find that out really soon. Some time passes. That's when we see her zipping up her boots. Mm, in my car. It doesn't make sense. I had no idea. Well, right now what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna give our detectives a call. I'm gonna get their exact location. We have eyes on them right now. And we're gonna go confront them. Are you ready to do that? Yes, I'm ready to confront him. All right, Let me go ahead and call him right now. Mm -hmm. Master. Hey, Detective Gomez. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put you on speaker. All right, Detective, go ahead. She actually arrived here at the rest of 15 minutes ago. And she's on his break right now. They're both eating. <sighs> okay. All right, copy that. Thank you so much, Detective Gomez, and I will see you shortly. Sounds good. Let's go. What the hell going on? What are you doing up here? No, what is what are you doing? No, you're supposed to be working. I am working. No, who is this? It's a friend of mine. Do you know he's married? I have no idea you're married. Where's your freaking ring at? I, I got wearing, mine on. I ain't been wearing my ring and you know it, cause my fingers swell. You it ain't got that? to do with your fingers swelling. You know my fingers swell. What is going on? We it got 30 years in No. Yeah, what is no. going on? I've been seeing on the tape, I saw you. Listen, Tell bitch, what is what? going on? I saw you with my what? husband. Doing what? what? Doing and that. then you sit here, you eating my damn food too? She ain't eating your food. Hey, yeah, Virgil. this is my food. This is Virgil. Virgil. Yeah. Virgil. Oh, you're a I cheap date, that. right? Virgil. You're a cheap date. Hey, look. That's how come he had to bring Eric. you to his job, because Virgil. he Eric. can't afford to take you nowhere Virgil. else. Virgil, you mean what? to tell me that this isn't you? This isn't you, miss? This isn't what? you? What? Like, your friends kiss? Yeah, yeah friends y'all kiss. No, you don't. Friends make I don't up. kiss all my friends. We got five kids. But look, and I have no idea. You're wrong. Why you do this? Don't come to my job like this. Why did you don't do this? Don't come to my job like this. No, look. Why would you, you say wrong. not come to your job look, like this you when wrong. you let her come we to your job? We got 30 years. And guess what? And what? And what? I can't have friends. I'm not a female. Why don't I know I've about it? I've been having I've never friends. seen her at the house. There's a difference that's between friends and friends with benefits, man. That's your picture that's, that's on his phone. That's because I didn't invite her to the house. Yes, it is. He's a... I, we've been going out. What oh, so you sleep with all your friends? No. Get your hands off of me. Hey, so, hey, listen, Ben. You mean to tell me that no, when you guys I were in this van together, you, you did nothing? Hold 
Hold on. You look like trash oh. to me when you get in the back of a married man's van. Hey. He can't even take you to a hotel. This is not the place for this. He can't even take you to a hotel. Wait, oh, so you tell me, Virgil, if this isn't the place for this, this is this the place for you to hook Why up with her? Why are you bringing her here then? Because she can come sit down. You know, when, when I, I call her. you and I, like, want to know about the case and stuff, oh, no, you'll come for everything. Hey, it's hey, fine. Hey, hey, hey. Now I know why hey, you're on you know there. I had no hey, idea. Hey, y'all need to take this outside. You know what? I had no idea You're fine, you but y'all need to take it outside. How would I know? You, how you know? You ask a man. That's how you know. No, you don't ask. Man, you look at his freaking ring finger. And I ain't wearing this. Well, you, you, need to, you need to start asking instead of acting like a tramp. Take it outside, Don't please. call me a tramp, bitch. Oh, you Take call me a bitch and you call Take me a tramp? Coming up next, the conclusion. What the hell going on? What are you doing up here? Do you know he's married? How would I know? You need to start asking instead of acting like a tramp. How you go? How you go? Call me a bitch. We can talk about this. There's nothing going on between me and her other than friendship. This looks like something going That's on. In that van. In the back of my van. There was nothing. Oh. Back there, and y'all been laying up back there. That's there was nasty. Nothing going. On. So why, so why are you in the back seat of the van with her? Because I chose to sit in the back seat because okay, and she gets no out idea. doing her clothes and stuff. I had yeah, no Virgil, why would she be putting idea. her boots on and like zipping them up out of your van? Look, how many? You know, we how many we've been we, together too many years. For okay, this. do you trust me or not? It's not do a matter you, of trust. Yes, it's it what is. The pictures it's a matter. Me. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a matter of trust. No. Do you trust so me? So you are still married? Yes. To, okay. I thought you said she died 20 years ago. I, didn't I say am she not dead at all. I said, Obviously. I said we haven't been together. No, you said she was dead. Regardless of the you fact you're married to this woman, you cheated with this woman, you lied to her and to her. So what oh, do you have to say for God, yourself? Oh, my God, I can't believe it. So That's if you it. weren't doing nothing, why does that look hey. like on there that you're doing something? Virgil, you say you want her to trust you. What is your definition of trust in this relationship? In your 30-year marriage that just got a speed bump in it because you decided to cheat with this woman right here, it what is your definition really of trust? Cheating. It what was, was it? Just friendship. What was it? You know what I'm you saying? You can't talk it to me on the phone. Friendship? You working late? I, then why did you send me flowers and a card? Flowers. I didn't my car. Flowers. Friendship to me is like going out and getting groceries together, not going Flow and getting in your yeah, own van. I ain't had That's flowers since I was a teenager from it. You been able to afford flowers? God. How you able to afford flowers? You're freaking hey, I can't even get to story, work. What's your name? Because this is who you with. I'm his wife. This stuff is ending right now. Oh my God. You want to see it? Look at the tape. Hey, I oh, saw it. The eyes don't oh, lie. What surveillance? Yeah, let me see it. Give me the iPad, please. I, mean, I want to where the flowers are. Oh, please. So you were telling me that you court. zipping up your boots right there. First, he lets you in on one side. Then he gets in on the other side. You guys are in there for at least 30 oh, can minutes. Oh, open up the other door. So That's pictures, all. so you guys were looking at pictures for 30 minutes. And then you had to, what did you get a the picture lost why, in your boot when it's on a cell phone? I came out this side is because I forgot I had a childproof lock on the other door. That's and fine, but what did you do for 30 minutes no. sitting inside no. of your van? No. Talking. No. no. Talking? No, no. Like I said. Okay, I'm gonna Oh, so you're you. just friendly to any man coming So along. you've been cheated on because you had no idea he was married. You're not I even with no this idea man. I he was married. I'm gonna go show you. I'm gonna get the card and the flowers. All right, you go get your card and your flowers. So please tell me a little bit about what's going on, Virgil. You have this woman that you bring into your van because you give her free stuff from she, your restaurant. She was coming to the restaurant. We struck up a conversation. I liked her attitude. So I'm gonna So what is it about her attitude that you that you like hers There's better than mine? wrong with your attitude, but I can't say? talk to you the way you I talk picture? to her. Oh, to my vanilla honey. This. My vanilla honey. Like oh, you sent her this? I have a picture. Chocolate bunny. You call that a friend? That looks like a vanilla a honey, right? This is my damn flower. God, I can't believe you. What? So now you're gonna leave for this? A one night quickie? Uh, please. It's up to you. No, it's oh, up please. to you. No, it's up to you. Because you're the one you with caught. I wasn't caught. Whatever you decide to do, we do. You I'll see ass. No. Hey, don't get freaking out. What do you want I to do? can't believe you. I'm oh sorry. Turn that hurt. Yeah. What? Yeah. I'm I mean, sorry you got, you got me off. into the midst of this. Get my reins. Let me out of here. I don't need this. Do you need this? No. 
that makes you happy. That's your wife of 30 years. I would hope that would make her happy, man. makes you happy. Yes, okay. that's what makes me happy. All right, we'll you being at home is this, what makes me this happy. This was not the place to do this. Where else was it? This is where y'all at? This was not the place to do this. It not happen. on my job. This is where y'all at? Okay. Freaking You ready? Yes. Let's All right, let's go. get out of here. Let's That's go. for you. Let's go. Let's go. And uh, we'll see you soon, let's man. Let's go. It just, right, it let's, just don't make let's sense. go. Watch your backs. Let me see you again. Let me see you again. Whoa. Get that camera out of my face, please. Get the camera out of my face. Following the confrontation, Ariel is deeply distraught by the actions of her husband. Stay tuned as we reveal on how she's recovering. But now, Brandon Gosling comes back in to explain himself concerning the day he was caught gallivanting with a pregnant girlfriend by his own wife as cheaters cameras rolled. We was leaned up against a four-wheeler because we had a little bit of downtime finally. And next thing you know, I see out of the corner of my eye a bright light that you're not used to seeing with amongst all the horses and cows. And next thing I know, there's cameras shoved in my face. And then I look over at Cassie, I'm like, oh my God, this is just blown up. Oh my. Who are you? Oh. Who are you? Who are you? What in the world? I'm his girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. Bring this here. Yeah. Well, Brandon, what, were you gonna say anything to her? Eventually, where, where would it, ha where would it have here. to happen? Not here. It wasn't going to happen here, but not, not like this. Well, how? I mean, it's not like you didn't have it'd enough been, time. It would have been something totally different than this right now. You have a child. Yeah, I do. Right? I There's do. nine months there. Yeah. How long is. is this relationship going on? A couple months. Me and Cassie have had conversations on the phone. Uh, probably more times within me and Thelma. Uh, that's something that I probably would like to consider. She's hurt still and it's going to take a lot of me to make it up to her but i think that would actually be the easier road you're not the same person who are you you know i don't need any of this really i don't no but but no. you brought you made this I happen understand you I brought this upon yourself so for you to run out now and i'll take care of it's kind of cowardly go. that's fine i'll take care of it as I go you figuring out as you go along this isn't really going to help them any and that's a big responsibility. It is, but I'll take care of it as I go. Unfortunately, the, the reason that we're here is because these. your wife loves you. Look at these. Take them and look at them. I know. I've seen these pictures. You destroyed his life now. No, I haven't. I probably handled the situation the best I knew I could handle. You know, I tried to talk for a little bit, and there was no reason with either Cassie or Thelma. So the best thing for me to do is concentrate and, uh, mainly on myself right now try to make myself a little bit better of a person, but I honestly don't see a lot of things wrong with me. Following the emotional confrontation, Ariel Garrison admits she is contemplating divorce. She knows that any reconciliation will have to be earned by her husband. When asked if she has any vengeance in her heart, Ariel admits that she's still angry at her husband and is considering, maybe I'll go out and find a young man who wants to help me teach my husband a lesson. For his part in the affair, Virgil admits that he jeopardized his marriage. He says he'll do now whatever his wife wants. The suspect's companion, Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. You know, he works at a bar, so he gets off late. And he said he was, he normally goes to the gym in the mornings and like early, like eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning. And um, this one night he's been, he's been going after he gets off work. And one night he didn't call me or anything all morning, like all night that night, all morning. He didn't, I, he didn't call me until three o'clock the next afternoon, which is not like him. Steven, age 21, a bartender accused of mixing unwelcome adulterants into his relationship. Upon briefing on the particulars of the case, Cheater's agents surround the suspect's residence. 
Sometime in the afternoon, Cheater's investigators spot their mark, Stephen, leaving home. Trailed by Cheater's surveillance specialists, the suspect drives to a pizza parlor where he meets an unknown female. It's one thing if you're busy, you would still find a way to text me or, to, you know, something to contact me, you know? I mean, if you really love me, that's what you do. You don't just disappear for 12, 18 hours, you know? Cause, well, I mean, I was worried about him. I thought something happened. I mean, he just got off work, you know? People are leaving at, you know, crazy hours of the night, sitting there when he's leaving the gym, when he's going to work out. So I was worried about him. Arm in arm, the pair stroll across the lot to the restaurant. Apparently, the suspect cannot keep his hands to himself. Throughout the meal, Stephen keeps one arm wrapped around his pizza date. After a while, the suspect and his mystery woman leave the pizza joint. We've been together for so long, and I've never talked in any, any of my like past relationships. I've never even gotten to the point where they've met my family. I mean, I love him. You know, he tells me he loves me. We love each other. And I just, it's just so hard for me to even imagine that he's sitting there doing something because I just, I can't see it. But at the same time, it's just his behavior is so different all of a sudden after things of the future have come up. Stephen protectively escorts his date to her vehicle. The two proceed to spend a few minutes kissing in the parking lot. After saying goodbye, Stephen drives home, which ends the day of surveillance. He knows what's right and wrong. I don't know what that, if it's, you know, I don't know, I don't know the other side of it. I know my side of it. And he knows my side of it. <laughs> like, it's our side, you know? And he just, I don't know, like, <laughs> sorry. Just like even thinking about it, I just... You know, she might not know what he's doing, you know? I mean, if that's the case, nobody, like, I don't know for sure, but I know for sure he knows what it, that is wrong and what he's doing is wrong. So it is him to blame, and he will take the fault. The cheater's cadre continues to stake out the suspect's residence. This afternoon, with a bag in hand, Stephen gets into his sedan and drives away. Followed by a cheater's mobile unit, the suspect rides to a gas station. As per his M.O., Stephen meets his secret sweetheart, now identified only as Carrie, in the parking lot. The suspect and Carrie caravan across town to an iconic sports stadium. Standing on the steps of the building, the two spend the afternoon taking pictures of each other. Finished with their outing, the twosome hop into their separate vehicles and drive to an auto parts store. The suspect diddles with Carrie's engine a moment. Stephen then walks into the building, emerging a few minutes later with a few items in hand. The suspect works on Carrie's engine, topping off all vital fluids. Carrie gives her slick savior a squeeze, holding him tightly. Stephen holds the door for her. As Carrie leaves, the suspect drives home for the evening. As with previous days, Cheater's investigators continue the stakeout of the suspect's residence. Stephen leaves his apartment and drives to a familiar gas station where he meets his familiar female. Stephen greets Carrie warmly with hugs and kisses. The pair climb back into their respective vehicles and drive away. Unaware they have a cheater's squad on their tail, Stephen and Carrie drive to a fitness studio. Once cheater's detectives get inside, a miniature camera captures footage of the suspect and his sweetie taking an aerobics dance class. After an hour or so, the class finishes, and Stephen and Carrie make out for a few minutes before the suspect sends her on her way. Having seen enough, Cheater's agents close the case and compile the facts for Kelly to assess. Coming up, the confrontation. Having collected sufficient evidence of the suspect's covert activities, Cheaters requests a meeting with Kelly. Demoralized by the prospects of bad news, Kelly nevertheless decides the truth needs to be known. 
First thing I'd like to say, Kelly, is I understand that you're going through a lot right now with your relationship. We have conducted our investigation. My question for you, Miss Kelly, are you prepared to see what we have come up with? Uh, I mean, I'm as prepared as I can get, I guess. Like... Fair enough. All right. On this day of our investigation, we are outside of Stephen's home. A few moments later, he emerges and he gets into his vehicle and leaves. The suspect arrives at a pizza place. That's when we see him get out and he greets this unknown female with a kiss and a hug. Do you recognize her at all? No. Continuing on, Kelly, Stephen opens the door and they go into a restaurant. That's when we see them getting a couple things to eat. After finishing up their meal, they walk out hand in hand, arm in arm. We see Stephen lay one really big kiss on this unknown female. She goes back to her vehicle and leaves. He gets back into his and leaves as well. I understand this is very hard to watch, okay? And this is someone that you love and you care about a lot. Obviously, he's lied to you about a lot of things. I could just tell by the way that you're reacting to seeing this. Yeah. But listen, the only reason that why we are here is to get you your answers and to really make Steven accountable for these actions that are causing you tears right now. Yeah. Continuing on with our investigation, we are outside of Steven's home. Our detectives catch Steven getting into his vehicle. He gets in with the gym bag and he drives away. As our detectives follow, Steven arrives at a gas station. He meets up with that same unknown female again. They embrace with a hug. She gets into her vehicle and follows Steven. As our detectives tail them, they arrive at this auto parts store. They park their two vehicles next to each other. After that, he walks inside got to be kidding me. And comes out with what I see to be some coolant. While putting coolant into this lady's vehicle, mm -hmm. he receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Kelly, tell me if you remember this. Hello? What are you doing? I'm just uh, helping this lady with her car. Oh, you're helping a lady with her car? Yeah, I was walking into the gas station and uh, she asked if I help something wrong with her car. Okay. What are you doing after that? Uh, probably going to go to the gym. Are you having a, another hardcore session with your buddies? Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, what time should I be expecting you? Uh, I guess around 7.30, maybe, maybe later. I guess I'll see you there in a little bit. I love you. Love you too, baby. <laughs> Don't be love me. As he hugs a complete stranger, <laughs> helps her out with her vehicle, escorts her into the vehicle. When was the last time you opened up a car door for you? <laughs> Been a long time been a long, long time. After finishing up his mechanic antics, he goes home for the evening. Oh at this point in time, Kelly, with what I have and what received information-wise, they're at a Zumba class, they are together. We're gonna go to the location, get a word from our detective, and go from there. Right. There's our detective right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see what he has to say. Okay, he's inside with the girl. Let's go. All right, Gomez. Everybody out. Everybody out. When you walk in, he's straight to the right. He's wearing an orange shirt. Okay. Okay. All right. Walk in. Right. To the right. To the right. Yeah. Coming up next, the conclusion. They're at a Zumba class, they are together. Yeah, working out your lips. That's what you're 
go outside. Let's go outside. Let's go outside. Bastard. Can I talk to you for a minute? You, by yourself. Let me talk to you for a minute. Yeah, let's talk. Over here. All the cameras are here catching you being an ass. Why are you lying to me? All I'm doing is working out. Like, with working this out? I'm watching you. It's not a problem. You sat there and lied to me, said you were helping some girl when I called you one day. It was, I was her. I was, no, it wasn't. Yeah, you were I was helping her. her. Yes, she just you were helping her. Helping her. You ass. Well, You're not. such an ass. Let's Don't go. sit there and do this to me. Carrie, hi. I'm Clark Gable with the show Cheaters. I want to let you know that this is Stephen. Did he tell you that was his real name? Um, I guess his name is Stephen. I mean, I've only hung out with him a few times and had a quick trip. All right. Well, Stephen over here. Sorry, I just had to work it out. So he's awesome. No, it's okay had a girlfriend for a very long time and has been together with her while he has been together with you as well. Wait, 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 did. wait. So, wait, wait, hold on. Let me ask him a question. Can I ask him a question? Yeah, go ask him a like, question. What the f*** are you doing here? Come here, you ass. Come here. Come here, mother You ass. Over. Over. Give up, Steven. You. Come here! Come here! You're gonna talk to me right now. What are all these people here for? They're here catching it's about you. Me and you. It's me, about and me and you. And that bitch. We need to fix this. It's about me and you. No. This is over. You Don't lied to me. I'm done running from the. What? Because you got tired? I have a question. You don't get to ask me. Do you want, Steven? Do you want me or her? I don't want either of y'all right now. Either of us, excuse you, mother you want? Steven, no. let me talk to you for a second. Let me talk to you for a second. Just stop. Relax. You relax for a little bit, man. You owe me a CC's pizza dinner, mother <laughs> Cheap ass, I'm always paying for your <laughs> such a dickhead. I can't believe him. Kelly, she had no so idea, gonna... no idea about any of this. Huh? You're not going to say anything to any of us? You're just going to walk away. Come here. Yeah, you know what? You Come here. Guys? Come on, get out of here. You pussy. Run away from some bitches. Come on. You you love girls so much. Why are you running from them? Why are you running from them? Stop. Yeah, if you like girls so much, what, what? Why are you running from them, Stephen? They're half your size. I don't want any more of this. I don't want any more of this. Well, seems like you want a lot more of this. I mean, look at this. You're putting radiator fluid in her. Talk to anybody. Taking her out to restaurants. This is the last time me and you had a good time. How about you come over every once in a while? I do. How about I'm you actually try, try, try? I'm try. over all the time. No, you're not. I'm over all you're the time. You're always working out I'm with your buddies. Is this do. your meathead friend over here? No, it's not. This is some girl that you are over just like you're me over. No, yeah, she's not, she's not like that. It's not like that. Yes, you ever it is like that. It is like that. Steven. Steven. I'm getting out of here, I'm done. You're not going anywhere. No, you're not. What happened with your relationship? At what point did the miscommunication happen that made you proceed? I met her at a QT, like she said. Uh, she was cute, and I liked her. You know what's funny? QT? Really? Really? Your little meeting spot? That's where you met her? Do you think if you would have been honest, Stephen, when you made the mistake, do you do really? You're dealing with a very forgiving girlfriend. Six months ago, when stuff got I don't want to fix anything. It's already over. Well, then bye. How that make you feel? Cool down. A cheater backing up, watch out. If he hits you, he'll probably say it wasn't him. Oh. Okay, drive on. After the confrontation, Kelly must decide to either forgive or reject her untrustworthy boyfriend. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals her final resolution. But first, Chris, 
visits to explain his side surrounding the night he was caught with his roommate's wife on cheaters. When Simon confronted us, it was really, really embarrassing. I had a pie shoved in my face and a bunch of cameras surrounding us on the table. Uh, I, I was pretty shocked. And when you've been caught red-handed, you know, I guess emotions start to flare. Right there, right there. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? Hey, hey, what are you doing? What's going on, man? What are you doing? What are you? I'm Clark Gable with Cheaters. What's going on? Do you know that this is his... Do you know what this is? What the f*** are you doing? What are you doing, man? Oh, okay, calm down. My wife's here. You're with my wife, yeah? We're just, just having, having a pie. Having a pie, having a couple of beers. Is it nice? Is it nice? It's a f***ing nice! Oh, it's him! Now that everything's out in the open, uh, Sarah and I have really taken the, the relationship to a whole new level. Met her family last week, and that was really fun. And uh, they seem to like me a hell of a lot more than Simon, I'm pleased to say. But, uh, we'd Thinking about getting married, Sarah wants to get married in a big church, but uh, I'd, I'd rather just take her to the Chapel of Love and maybe do a drive through wedding. And I enjoyed having a few beers with Simon at the pub uh, back in England and at school, but quite frankly, our relationship is much more important than my friendship with Simon. Okay. Ruined Simon, everything. Look, it was a mistake. You ruined Clearly. everything. Took my heart, you sliced it open, you shoved up my ass and me. That's how bad it is. Like. Don't come home. Find a way home. F yourself. Go f yourself. Yeah. Peace out. F you guys. F you. F you. You know what? F you. F you, man. Yeah. What's up? Stop, 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 stop. 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 I couldn't care any less about what you say or what you think. Uh, and it's easy to look at a situation on TV and say, oh, that, that guy's the bad guy, you know, point to that guy. But the truth is, you probably would have done the same thing if you were in my situation uh, and you had an opportunity with a woman like Sarah. And she was, you know, throwing herself at you and uh, the feeling was mutual. So, like I said, if you don't like it, you can suck my d too. Following the devastating events of the confrontation, Kelly Torres realizes she needs to be alone, at least for a while. Kelly admits to cheaters that even though she still loves the suspect, she loves and cares about herself more. As for breaking Kelly's heart, the suspect, Stephen, has no problems opening up to cheaters' producers. The suspect admits to being shallow, but he also claims he doesn't really care. When contacted by Cheater's producers, Stephen's companion, Carrie, states that she no longer sees the suspect and abstains quieting questions. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheater's. There's been absolutely no sex, no affection whatsoever. And I used to could get on a cell phone to Google because I don't have a smartphone, and I'm not even allowed to Google on a cell phone anymore. He just yanks it out of my hand, or he does whatever he's gonna do to it and then hands it back to me. There's no privacy. If I'm gonna give my life to you, then where's the pri why do we need privacy? David, age 41, a cattle salesman suspected of corralling another girlfriend. Upon getting the call from headquarters, cheaters agents assemble at the suspect's cattle ranch and set up for a stakeout. After a while, an unknown vehicle wheels up the dirt road leading into the ranch. An unknown female gets out of the SUV and greets the suspect with an enthusiastic hug. A few moments later, the pair get into David's car and take off. Well, within the last two years, his grandfather had gotten really sick, and he took over um, a ranch of his grandfather's. And so he was going back and forth, but when he was not at the ranch, he was with me and pretty much moved everything of his stuff in because he wanted to be there with me. He used to want me to go to the ranch with him every single time we went, and now all of a sudden it's, oh, I don't need you, babe. Oh, I got it. You need to stay home and rest. And I don't need to rest. I'm, I'm active. I get outside and do things. I just don't understand why he would do this to me, and so I need you guys' help 
to figure out where is he going? Is he going to the ranch by himself? Is he not going to the ranch? The ranch should be our number one priority. The suspect stops the car further into the ranch property. David and his date get out, and the mystery woman spins around and places her cowboy hat on the suspect's head. The couple walk toward a fence. The unfaithful cowpoke kisses his paramour passionately. The young lady hangs on to David as he leads her around the fence. The suspect takes a moment to feed a cow before leading his buckaroo to a place where they can sit down and make out. After a long kissing session, David puts his lady friend back into his car and they drive back to her SUV. The two spend a few more minutes lustfully saying goodbye and after one last kiss, the sexy cowgirl drives away, leaving David to his work. If he is cheating on me, then he has ruined everything I ever believed about in love because he was my Prince Charming and I just can't imagine the thought of some other woman touching him or him touching some other woman. Why give me this? Why? If you're just gonna do it. Cheaters' detectives keep vigil over the suspect's ranch. After a while, the same woman from previous surveillance pulls into the ranch entrance. A hot cowgirl, now identified only as Kayla, gets into the suspect's car, and they head into town. David and Kayla stop at a grocery store to grab some supplies. The pit stop only takes a few moments. David gets in and drives away. Followed covertly by Cheater's investigators, the suspect drives his date back to the ranch. David and Kayla get out and find a quiet, shady spot to relax. One thing leads to another, and soon the lusty couple begin kissing and fondling each other. Knowing he still has plenty of work to do, the suspect escorts his mistress back to her suburban. More kissing occurs. Finally, Kayla gets into her vehicle, and David gives away one last kiss. Kayla leaves the ranch, ending this day of surveillance. Cheater's operatives continue the stakeout of the ranch. And as usual, by midday, Kayla comes a-calling. The cowgirl gets an escort by a ranch hand to where David works with a forklift. Kayla mounts up. The suspect greets his companion with a kiss. The two take a ride on the forklift. Reaching their destination, David and Guest get out, and the suspect gives his honey a long kiss. After which, the couple check on the cows, and after a while, they drive the forklift back to their parked cars. David kisses Kayla. After a few minutes, with his arm wrapped around her waist, the gentleman puts his new lady into her vehicle. One final kiss signals the finish for the philanderer. As the companion leaves, Cheaters herds up all evidence for a distressed Aaron. Coming up, the confrontation. Gleaning confirmation of the suspect's deceit, Cheaters arranges a meeting with Erin to expose her fiancé's lies. With fear building at the prospect of bad news, Erin steps forward to view the truth. Erin, thank you for coming out today. I understand that we had to pull you away from some stuff, but uh, you know why you're here. We have conducted our investigation. We have come up with some findings. My question for you is, Erin, are you prepared to see what we've come up with? Yes. All right. So Aaron, we begin our investigation at this ranch. That's when we see this SUV pull up and this woman gets out. It's hard to see because we're far away, but do you recognize her at all? Her hair color, her vehicle, anything? No. Never seen her in your life? No. Okay. Continuing our investigation, they get into his vehicle together and a while later they arrive at this store. Well, they walk into the store together and then, while he's in that store, David receives a phone call, Aaron. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you recall this day. Hello? Hey, babe, how you doing? I'm hot as a dog. So what's going on at the ranch? I was just feeding the horses. I put the bulls up already. 
I've been working on it all day. Yeah, I understand. You got people helping you? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good. And you're super free to get all that sweaty anyway, so. Oh, I'm going to finish great. up work and go home and I'll be there shortly. Okay, well, I miss you. Yeah, I miss you. All right, I love you. I love you too. All right, bye, baby. Bye. So after completely lying to you, he finishes up that phone call. Listen, I'm really, really sorry, and I know this is hard to watch, Aaron, okay? But this woman comes out with some groceries. She gets inside, and they leave together. So they return to the ranch after the grocery store. They get out of the vehicle. They go and sit in front of the house and begin to kiss. After finishing up the kissing in front of the door, he escorts her back over to her vehicle, leans in for a very long kiss, and the female leaves the ranch. And his grandfather's sick and has no clue, and he's been in my life for, you know, over three years. And he has no clue what his grandson's doing to me. Well, after today, I'll tell you this much, Aaron, is he's going to have a clue. He's going to know exactly what's been going on with his grandson at his ranch. On this day of our investigation, we are outside of the ranch. A while later, that same SUV pulls in and parks. That's when we see that woman walking over to David when he's sitting in that tractor. Are you kidding me? She gets in the tractor with him, and he drives with a hay bale over to the bullpen. He totally did that with me. He's doing things with you with this woman. Exactly the same. Okay, well, after finishing up their little ride in the tractor, drive over back towards the vehicles, and they get out of the tractor, and they embrace with a very long kiss. That's when we see David escort this woman back over to her SUV, leans in for a very long kiss, and she leaves the ranch. I am just, I'm devastated. I can't believe somebody would buy somebody a $4,000 engagement ring, take them to Niagara Falls, do all the things that he's done for me just to find somebody else in three short years. I mean, why? So at this point in time, I think you've seen enough, Aaron. I understand you're upset, you're pissed off. So what I want to do is, why don't we go ahead and get in the van, get on the road? I'm ready, I'm so pissed off. I don't even know what, what the I'm gonna say to any of them. I'm all just right. too pissed. Let's go. How you doing, Gomez? Hey, Clark, how's it going? It's going, man. Good, Where good. is she? All right, we're gonna walk this way, right around the corner from these little R RVs right here. So if we're quiet enough, how close can we get before they know we're right on them? Probably about 50 feet. Okay, that's fine. But, but they're upstairs and, and part of this little bucking thing they got going on over there. Okay. Upstairs okay. what? Well, let's find out. All right, let's go. When we get closer, let's try to be quiet so we can really surprise them, you know? Coming up, the conclusion. They're upstairs and part of this little bucking thing they got going on over there. Let's do this. She doesn't know the wrath of me. You mother What the are you doing here? What the is that? Who is it? Who is she? One of your little ranch hoes? Okay. What's your name? Oh, is she just helping? Okay. Yeah. I'm Clark Gable with Cheaters. She's helping. It's nice to meet you. Do you know? His wife. What is on this Apparently the no. cheater, right? Get out of my face! I'm no Get one. Get out of my face! No one. Get my wife! Hey, Listen David. Listen to me. David. Listen to me. Tell me who the fuck she is and why you're here with her. Do you know who I am? Nope, nope. Yeah, no. I'm his fiance. Yeah, me too. Oh, really? $4,000 and you're gonna go for a ranch hand? No. You buy her a $4,000 ring too? So you're never home. Oh, really? I'm never home because I'm helping your ass all the time. Or no, going to school full time so I can learn how to take care of a ranch. No, you're always at the work. I'm all, okay, whatever. David, what happened, man? I mean, this is a, obviously a very- Who the hell problem. are you, man? I'm Clark Gable with Cheaters, and I'm here. Ridiculous. Your fiance, some- no, Ridiculous? No, this is getting yeah, right. Yeah. It's ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, because I'm here most of the time. Where are you? Let's Not go, here. Let's go let's because go down obviously about you're this. here, bitch. Well, good. Maybe you should take care of your man, and then you wouldn't have- Worry about it. Are you kidding me? He's no. well taken care of, bitch. I can see that. 
just now. Yeah. Yeah. David, talk to me for a minute. Listen, what happened? Man. I got, I got, I got surveillance of you bringing you out here to your your grandfather's ranch. Because I understand. Who brought you out here? Your fiance did. She called us because she was worried about you because you've been distant. You haven't been bringing her out here or anything to help you feed or anything like that. So she called us, and that's the only reason why we're here. His dying grandfather wanted me to help him take care of this ranch, not you, me. I don't want to take care of this ranch. Then get the out of here. Go out to your man. Fine. See ya. See ya, bitch. I'm the. Yep, you heard me. Well, looks how dedicated you are to your man who bought you a ring. Yeah. Because I love this ranch, and I love that old man, and I love David. Well, we see how well he's working out for you, we don't you? You got, you got a girl that you have been with for three years, you live with. You, you bring her out to your grandfather's ranch, who, from what I understand, your grandfather is a little ill right now. And this seems like a very special place. Do you think you owe an explanation I don't owe you nothing, man. Not me. You don't know my grandfather. You love me or her? Me or her? I love you. Do you? Yes. Then why the f did you get her? It's okay, can I, when did he buy you this ring? Not too long ago. Not too long ago? Nope. And what were his uh, intentions behind that ring? Well, I thought they were to follow through, but apparently he's got a little bit other things on his mind, huh? Did he ever tell you that he had a significant other that he lived with and shared three years of his life with? I wouldn't have been here if he did. Thank you. Your grandfather is dying, and he begged me and you, David, in the hospital to take care of him, and you did this to me. And the only reason why I'm still standing here is because I love you and I love your grandfather. But I am pissed! I'm so pissed! After everything that we've said to each other, everything we've done here, that's who you're going home with. And all honesty, I don't think you should go home with either of us. But that's just my personal opinion. I apologize to you. But apparently, you don't you know how to keep your in your pants. And I'm done with it. Exactly, because obviously he keeps schedules separate, and that's something we're going to have to been, discuss. He hasn't been letting her come out here. Why don't you go after your man? He's running away. Yeah, he'll come back. He always does. I want to beat your ass, but because you didn't know, it's just keeping me from doing it. Just say you know. Get off. Keep in the Get ring. Off. and done with you. You understand? Fine. Get off my ranch. It's getting sold, and I want all of my back, and you're not getting your back. You can keep it. Good, I'll keep it. Get the off. Go. You touch me. I swear to God. I stay the hell away from Let me tell you what, bitch. <laughs> Hold on. Don't with me. I swear to God, I will knock the out of you. Why are we even fighting over him? Why? I asked you the same thing that I probably heard him say the same words to me that he has said to you. Do the other way. What if I didn't know about you and I caught you two together? I didn't know how long. I'm no, sorry. Didn't. Because I didn't know about you. So you're doing it to the wrong person. You know what? I changed my mind. Let's leave. I'm good. All right, back. let's go. You can keep your ring, David. Following the confrontation, Erin finds herself at odds between her disgust of the suspect's actions and her love for her fiance. At the end of the episode, Cheaters fills you in on her final decision. But next, Tom LeBlanc discusses what life has been like since he lost his girlfriend on Cheaters. Well, the day of the confrontation, when I found out Taylor was, of course, cheating on me, and I was crushed, you know, when um, I was looking at the footage, I was just like in disbelief. I couldn't even believe that this was happening. Like I was at a loss for words. All I could do was just be emotional and that's, I just felt a heartache. Cause it's like, I spent two years, she kind of came into my life and rearranged it, changed it all for the positive. And then in the blink of an eye, she just didn't care. She just did the dirt and was with old buddy. I don't even know her name, but it was like, why? For what? Come on! Man, who the f bro, who the f who are you, bro? What's up, bro? What's up? 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 What's
my shoes at work. It took me about four months to really get over this uh, situation because she really did, you know, play a part in helping me and influence me positively. And at about that four month mark, I was just like, man, I can't keep being pouty faced and sad all the time. So I went out, started meeting people, started meeting the females and stuff. And so now I just talk, talk with females and I'm not even rushing anything. We having fun doing our thing, so. Look, how long have I been trying to get pregnant? I haven't been, okay? And once I have, and I lost it, I realized like, so you wanna mess with him? Huh? You wanna mess him before he was pregnant? Before we thought he was pregnant? I was. It, I knew it was yours. So you, it was yours. It could not have been. It mine. was yours. <laughs> it was yours. But I mean. Come on, baby. Let's go. He sees cameras on my face, man. Do you have anything else to say? He sees cameras on my Watch face. Go. Well, this whole situation allowed me to grow in a tremendous amount. I mean, I know it hurt, but at the end of the day. It just let me know that I need to keep my guard up with people. I mean, not not be, not be to the fact that I'm not open to love, but also be mindful of the fact that you have to figure out who people are before you date them. You have to figure out what are their motives, what are they into, what what are their goals and their morals and ethics and different things, and you have to use that, you know, and then give it time to manifest into something, not just rush into it. Following the confrontation, Erin Shields realizes that she has a tough road ahead of her. Taking the suspect back into her life despite the affair, Erin admits her love for him. Erin now accompanies the suspect to the ranch to assist him and keeps a close eye on him. In the end, the suspect David feels grateful that his fiance decided to take him back. David tells cheaters, I love her and I'd do anything for my girl. I just don't know what got into me. The suspect's companion, Kayla, would only state to Cheaters that she had said everything she for insight. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Katie's just been acting a little different lately. Um, she says it's because she's taking a new medication, uh, which apparently it takes about a month or so to build up in her system, which I understand that, but it's, it just doesn't seem like that's really the case. Katie, age 24, an unemployed woman suspected of adding a boyfriend to her already crowded relationship. After a briefing to discuss particulars of the case, cheaters dispatched agents to surround the suspect's residence. After a short wait, they spot the target, Katie, leaving her home. The suspect waits until an unknown white vehicle approaches and Katie gets in. A cheater's mobile unit follows the vehicle until the two arrive at a grocery store. As the suspect and her male friend walk across the parking lot, cheater's officers note Katie has her arm wrapped around her companion's arm. The conversations we have on the phone just keep getting shorter and shorter. She seems constantly busy. I'll ask her, you know, do you wanna, you know, hang out or do whatever? She just is constantly vague about everything she's doing. I mean, when I recently asked her if she wanted to move in, she couldn't give me a straight answer. I mean, six months ago when we talked about this, she was all for it. She just wanted to get the finances together, but I feel like now the finances are together, and I don't see why we can't. I mean, I asked her about it. She can't, she can't give me a real answer. With shopping bags in hand, the suspect and her paramour come out of the store. They make their way to the car and drive to a pet supply store. After a short while, Katie and her mysterious man exit the store. Cheater spies follow the duo back to the suspect's home where the unknown male drops her off and ends this day of surveillance. I mean, if Katie was cheating on me, I mean, I feel like, just let me go, you know? I mean, if you are cheating on me, just let me know. I mean, so I can move on. I've built my entire life around you. And I mean, you could at least give me that courtesy. It's just a respect thing.
Cheaters detectives keep vigil over the suspect's residence. Sometime during the day, Katie emerges from her domicile. She tromps through the neighborhood, finally arriving at a coffee shop. Katie meets the man from previous surveillance, now identified as John Kelly. They sip coffees and drink in each other's company. Kelly kisses Katie and protectively wraps his coat around her. After a while, the suspect and her date leave the establishment, heading to a neighborhood tobacco shop. They spend a few minutes replenishing their nicotine supply. Katie and her companion then return to the coffee shop. Kelly says his goodbyes, sends Katie inside, and walks away. Cheater's investigators call it a night. Noting the pattern, Cheater's detectives stick to the stakeout of the suspect's home. After a lengthy wait, Cheater's agents see Katie again leave her apartment. Kelly pulls up in his vehicle, and the pair drive off, unknowingly followed closely by a Cheater's mobile unit to a fast food joint. Grabbing meals, Katie and her companion drive around eating their fast food. The illicit pair stop at a liquor store briefly to pick up a bottle of booze. The suspect has her paramour drive her home. Kelly then escorts Katie and their bottle inside. A few hours later, the companion leaves, prompting cheaters agents to wrap up the case for a lovesick David. Coming up, the confrontation. With evidence of the suspect's dalliances confirmed, Cheaters calls upon David to review the case facts. Filled with disbelief and anger, David views the footage and finally witnesses the truth. David, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. My question for you is, are you prepared to see what we've come up with? Yes. All right. David, we begin our investigation outside of Katie's residence. A few moments later, we see Katie walk down the stairs. She walks across the street, and she arrives at a coffee shop. That's when we see her meet this male. They sit down outside and have a couple cups of coffee. They converse back and forth. And then that's when he leans in and he kisses Katie. How does that make you feel seeing a complete stranger to you kiss your girlfriend? Doesn't make me feel good. Okay, well, during this whole process, she receives a phone call. David, tell me if you recall this. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you remember this. Hey, babe. Hey, what's up? Reading out the coffee shop. What are you up to? Uh, I'm just at lunch. I had a question for you. What are you doing on Monday? I was going to see Susan. Why? Me and the guys are going to try to watch the game. You think we could uh, do it at your place? I don't think so, babe. You guys get so loud and messy. I don't want to deal with all that. We're not that bad. It's not going to happen, but I will cook you a nice dinner if you want to come over after work. Guess I can't say no to that. I love you. Love you too. Bye. After finishing up that phone call with you, she finishes up her cups of coffee. They walk across the street, holding hands, and go into a smoke shop. That's when our detectives catch them inside together, buying a few goods. And a short time later, they finally return to that same coffee shop, exchange with a few short kisses. That unknown male leaves, and Katie returns home from the evening. You told me that you guys were supposed to hang out last night. We were, we were. She didn't want to though. She didn't want to, and why was that? She said she was busy. She, uh, you know, made some excuse. That gentleman was actually hanging out with her last night and he stayed the night at her place. So why don't we get in the vans, we get on the road, I'll get some intel from my detective and we'll go from there. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. All right, right this way. All right, so right now, Dave, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stage right here. Does this look familiar? Yeah, this is our apartment. Yeah, so go ahead, let's stop right here, and then I should get a phone call from our detective any minute, and we'll go from there. Wait, here's our detective right here. Hey, man, go ahead. It's going well, man. We're literally staged right around the corner. All right, perfect. That sounds good. I'll let them know. I'll talk to you in a second. All right. 
What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and you're going to park in the back of the white Accord. It's going to be on the left-hand side of the street. We're going to block in the front of the car so they can't drive anywhere. So uh, let's stage here for another minute, wait for this phone call, and we're good to go. Go ahead, man. What's up? All right, go, 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 go. All right, I'll see you in a second. So go ahead and park behind that thing, and then van number two goes at the nose. Right there, swinging hard. There you go. Everybody out. Everybody out. Right there, right there. Hey, who the f is this guy? Uh, More David, let's just talk you, about this. I'm her boyfriend, dude. Her boyfriend, all these cameras, really? Yes. What's going on, David? Cheating. What's going on? I caught your ass cheating. What, what the f on this? Don't you touch me, bro. You got a little too close to her, bud. I don't think you get it. Get off of me, man. Do so you have anything to say about this? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Y'all keep him the f away from here. I'm telling you. Coming up, the conclusion. That gentleman was actually hanging out with her last night, and he stayed the night at her place. Who the is this guy? What's going Caught on, David? Cheating. Do you have anything to say about this? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's all you have to say is you're sorry? What's going all you got to say? Who the are you, dude? We are the cheaters, man. Can we just oh, go the cheaters. Cool. We caught you guys cheating. Did you that she was with him? With him? I mean, as far as I know, they were they were done. How long has this been happening? How have you been doing this? It's not, well. it hasn't been going on long, David. It's been over between us. Since when? We've been together for Since two years. Since when? Are two you years. surprised? Are you really surprised right now? How did this whole thing happen? How did this whole thing happen? I met a nice girl. We're having a, a decent time. She's a grown woman. She can make her own decisions. I can't believe you. Can't believe me. Yeah. Yeah. You cheat on me, and you can't believe me. How is she cheating, dog? Allegedly, y'all broke up. Like what? A month ago? We didn't broke up, dude. We didn't broke up, dude. Nothing to say about this, Can you guys just stop for just a second? Hey, if we're going, let's go. I like, just want to ask you a couple questions. What exactly happened? Why would you Why would you uh, go and see this guy when you're with another one? It's not what it looks like. It's, it's not, not what it looks like. No. So then what you're with him all last night. I right? just met someone, David. I'm sorry. You could have just told me. I'm sorry. I want to lie. You should probably get away so, from your front door. This is national what, television. Like, what happened last night, Katie? Nothing. Nothing. What do you mean? What this happened? This is all. You can't night? even talk to me. About She's talking last to you, night? bro. You have to get six inches from her face. Have your Discussion, get your get your clarity, hey. your peace of mind, and then walk the I'm on. talking to my girlfriend. Oh, you your girlfriend. She there. just told you she, that you weren't dating. Now she's your girlfriend still? Yes, she lied to you too, I guess. She didn't lie to me, bro. She's going to be going home with me tonight. You do? That's your ass. If these cameras weren't here, dude, I'd clean your clock, bro. Whatever, dude. Wipe the street with you, I promise you. Why would you let this happen? You were obviously with, with this gentleman over here. I didn't mean to. I just met him, okay? You just... We just hit it off. You hit it off that quickly? Yes. Keep walking towards me. Just Keep walking towards dudes. me. Yeah, two on other dudes, really. This you is all, see this what is, you're doing? This is what you're doing. Are you okay? You've done all this. You don't even seem like you care. I she do doesn't care. care but do you really want to do this to me? And my reputation, really? What reputation do you know. have? You had to know. Yeah. You, now I do know. You're acting like we haven't had problems. What's like one thing that we've truly connected on? I should have just told you, okay? That would have been the truth is always. It sucks. It's happened you. to me before. Like, I apologize that I'm that guy, but it's not like she didn't try to spare your feelings. I heard a couple of y'all's phone conversations, dude. When I ask for your opinion, you can talk. Until then, I'm gonna talk to Katie. You know what? My girlfriend. I'm gonna let you get away with that because I know you're all running raw with emotion right now, but mind your manners next time you talk to me, dude. So you have nothing to say about this, Katie, at all to your boyfriend that you've been with for two years? You're just gonna throw away all that time? Yes. You like to waste people's time? Out? Yes, that's what you just said, yes? Yes. Just waste my time. It's over, I'm sorry to waste your time. There's plenty of fish in the sea, David. I'm sure you'll meet someone. You're just so sweet. I didn't want to break your heart, okay? You're the sweetest guy I've ever met. Doesn't so you, you decided to do could've this been, instead? Could have been honest with me. We'll go. Go with him. He's your guy. Come on, let's get out of here. I don't want to be here anymore. As soon as they move the 
Vans were gone, dude. Short of calling a tow truck, I'm not going anywhere. So, Katie, why would you lie to both of them? You know, you you lied to him already. We've already established that. You screwed that up, but now you're starting to lie to him already. It's only been a month. Break his heart. You don't even know him. I think I know him a little bit better than you do at this point in time. What about me, though? I want to be with you. You want to be with me? Yes, John. I'm sorry. Are you I... going to stop lying to him too? Yes. And be honest with him. You've been with him for only a month now, and you're already lying to him. But he makes me happy. How like, many? How many he times? He makes situations how many times? happen. Like how, he's how a many... go-getter. He's working two jobs. How many times have you and this dick we've seen each other in the past month? Like once or twice. Once or twice, really? You know what? Apparently, y'all have some to talk about. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat the street because I have to do other than sit here and have cameras shoved in my face. And I'm done with it. You get it? I'm sorry she lied to you too, man. Yeah. What do you want to do? You want to talk to her? I mean, what else? What else can I say? Can we just talk away from all these people? Why don't you guys get in the van and talk? Then you can be away from all of them. That one right there. This will actually be perfect. It didn't have to be like this. Yeah. I thought we had something. We did. I'm sorry. It's been over for a long time, David. I just, you don't understand, okay? I have to chase my own dreams. I have to go live my own life. A life without me. I don't think I can A life do it. I tried to build for I, us. I can't do it with you by my side. You don't allow me to But you can go. with this guy of one month. I mean, I don't know, maybe. You know him for one month, and you know he's the dude for you. You made your choice, so go. Let's get the cameras out of here. I'll talk to you later, if you want to. I'm if you want to talk. I love you, David. Katie, why don't you give me why don't you give me a second to give him some fresh air? We'll, I'll take him back, and um, I appreciate your apology, and I uh, I wish you well. Following the information now divulged, David seems perplexed as to his next move. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals what he plans to do. But first, please welcome Tiara. Tiara comes forward in hopes to clear the air surrounding the day she was caught with Brandy Shaw's boyfriend. When me and Joey walked out of the restaurant, um, we started to proceed to the car, and next thing you know, we heard it was pitter-patter, and we didn't know whether to look back or whether to run, and we just kind of froze in our footsteps. And by the time, you know, we could even get a chance to turn around and look and see, you know, who was coming behind us, I see cameras in my face to this side and a girl right there. You know, my first reaction was like, what's going on? You know, what is this? And who is she? What is basketball? What is basketball? What is basketball? Come on, come on, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Basketball. Come on, baby. Basketball. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Basketball. Come on, baby. Basketball. Come on. I told really? you I'm playing basketball. basketball. Do you know that's his girlfriend? What's going on? Hold on. Yeah, we've been talking for a couple of months now. We met online. He told me he was single. He's not single. Oh, he's not single. So who is that? His that's girlfriend, his girlfriend of a few, years, a few he, years. And he does have a child with her. Yes. He has a child with her. Yes. He told me when we got in the car and when we were leaving the restaurant, and he was like, "I'm not gonna lie, it's my girlfriend. We've been together for years. We have a son together, but you know, I've had my doubts about that being my son." And he was like, we just been going through issues here and there. I fell for it at first. I tried to pursue being with him. And we went to the doctor to confirm that I was pregnant. Not even maybe a week later, I had a miscarriage. I started to see him a little less. And that's when I got to thinking in my head. I was like, he did this girl like this. Why wouldn't he do me like that? I'm not going to be in her shoes. We got to go. Get the cameras out of my face. We got to go. Think about it. You take this girl go. out. You don't tell her anything. You have random dinners. Because if I tell her I want to catch up with an old friend, how do you think that's going to go? So, and I didn't know he had a girlfriend or a child. So that doesn't seem strange to you? That is strange to me. That's why I mean, him needs to talk, but not in front of all these cameras. But at the same time, we're just, just catching up. You know, I'm going to let true, you know true, that true, eventually. Well, we've been kicking and I told you I missed my period last month. 
So, you know, I mean, all of this, I mean, you already got a child and you got a girl. Right now, I'm on a basis to where it's just like, hey, it's time for me to do my own thing, focus on me, focus on Tierra, and, you know, keep pursuing my career. Like I said, I've already been in a previous relationship with a guy cheating on me, and now this happened, and it just blew up in my face. So I'm like, you know, until that right guy comes along, I'm just not even going to pursue any more serious relationships for a long time. Following the confrontation, David Stevens dedicates his life toward finding a good woman. David states to Cheaters producers, I guess I attract certain types of women who won't commit. So maybe I need to look inside myself. David seems certain that eventually he'll find the right one. Although feeling hurt and used, David reveals he can't see himself holding a grudge. According to Katie, who seems rather forthcoming to Cheaters producers, she admits to having issues with commitment. Katie also admitted that she's changed her medication again and hopes this may fix her problems. As for his involvement in the affair, John Kelly discloses that he still sees the suspect. However, despite her insistence on the exclusive relationship, track his activities. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Whenever we first met, everything was great. We were totally in love, and I mean, he would pretty much bend over backwards for me. I have a little girl. She doesn't have her dad in her life, and he definitely stepped up and decided to be that father figure for her. And I mean, we were so open with each other. We told each other everything. I felt like, I mean, I knew anything that he did. He knew everything that I did, and it's just become totally different. Wade age 27. A warehouse loader suspected of stocking up on additional women. Briefed on the specifics of the case, Cheaters posts a squad of investigators around the home the suspect shares with Jessica. Wade eventually emerges and drives away. Unknown to the suspect, the Cheaters team follows him across town to a restaurant. In the parking lot, Wade greets an unknown female with a hug, and the two go inside. When he got in his wreck, things got worse. The arguments became more. Doctor's appointments are constant, and I don't, I haven't gone to any of them. I don't know what's going on with him, and there's been times where I'll call him, and he won't answer, and I won't hear from him, and my friends will call me and tell me that he's over at his homeboy's house, is what he calls it. And whenever I confront him about it, he gets really defensive about that too. And his stories never match up. It's never the same person. Names don't match up. It was a very good relationship between Wade and, and my daughter. Whenever she first came around, he was almost inseparable with her. He would take her to do things and like take her to the mall and take her out. and. Um, go to her soccer game. She started soccer and he would always be there. And now it's just like he avoids her almost as much as he avoids me. There's really no no contact or any kind of, I don't feel like there's any emotion there with him and, and her anymore. Inside the greasy spoon, Wade and his mysterious companion sit in a cozy booth. A kiss warms up the lunchtime meal. A short while later, Wade escorts his date to her vehicle. They share a few more affectionate kisses and say goodbye in an intimate fashion. As the young lady leaves, Wade gets into his car for the drive back to a lonely Jessica. My, um, my father cheated on my mom uh, when she was still pregnant with me, so I actually have a little brother who's only three months younger than I am, and that tears me apart, and I don't, like, I just, I didn't want that for my daughter. I don't want her to have to experience that, and. If, if he were to be out and, and cheating on me, like I feel like he is, and, and he knows what I've gone through and how I feel about everything, it's just gonna rip me apart. Staying with a game plan, Cheaters detectives keep vigil over Jessica and Wade's home. A strange vehicle pulls up in front. Cheaters agents think nothing of it until the suspect comes outside and greets the young driver, now identified as Mandy. 
Wade tells a story recounting how he got the neck brace. Wade and Mandy then go into her vehicle. The pair of sweethearts sit and chat in the car for a while. Eventually, Wade and his young lady decide their time is finished. The suspect painfully extracts himself as Mandy helps with support. One final kiss sends Wade scurrying back inside, ending the day's surveillance. Maintaining the stakeout around Jessica and Wade's home, Cheater's agents spot their mark leaving the building. The suspect gets into his SUV and drives across town to an injury rehabilitation center. Mandy dutifully waits on the suspect and lovingly assists him into the rehab building. A long while later, the suspect and his companion emerge. As Wade climbs into the driver's seat, Mandy walks around to the passenger side. The lovers spend some more quality time inside the SUV, hidden by the tinted windows. After some time, Mandy gets out and walks around to the driver's side. There, she spends a few more minutes saying goodbye in an intimate fashion. After more than a few kisses, Mandy finally lets her man head back home to his girlfriend. Cheaters wraps up the case and heads back to headquarters. Coming up, the confrontation. Garnering documentation and proof of Wade's deceitful actions, Cheater summons Jessica to examine the evidence. With a knot in her belly, Jessica forces herself to view the footage. Jessica, I'd like to say thank you for coming out on this afternoon on uh, such short notice. With that being said, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. My question for you is, are you prepared to see what we've come up with? Yes. Okay. Jessica, we begin our investigation outside of your residence. A few moments later, we see Wade walk to his vehicle, he gets inside and drives away. Our detective follows. He arrives at a restaurant. That's when we see him greeted by this unknown female and she gives him a hug. They go into a restaurant. They sit down at a table next to each other and exchange a kiss. Well, after they finish up their meal, they go outside of the restaurant. That's when we see Wade give her a farewell, they exchange a rather long kiss and a few more before he gets into his vehicle, she leaves, and then he returns home for the evening. On this day of our investigation, we are outside of your residence. A few moments later, that unknown female's vehicle pulls up and parks right next to Wade's. That's when we see Wade come outside. I see he's wearing a neck brace. Mm -hmm. Did something happen? He got in a wreck. After conversing with this unknown female, he gets into the passenger side of her vehicle. Rather hard to see what's going on in there, but they do spend some time in that vehicle before she helps Wade get out. They stand in front of her car and exchange a few more kisses. That's when the unknown female leaves and he walks to his apartment. Before he goes inside, he gets a phone call, Jessica. Now tell me if you remember this phone call. I'm just taking the trash out. How do you feel? How's your neck feeling? Uh, well, it's doing better. My, my uh, neck and my, my back's down you know, just ever since the Rex just hasn't been the same, you know, so. Do you need me to leave work and bring you anything? I can bring you anything you need. No, I don't need to do that. Uh, I'm, I'm all right. Okay. Well, I love you. Uh, you. All right, bye. All right. He got on the phone with you and said he was taking out the trash. Obviously, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. So this other female, by the looks of this, they look very comfortable in a romantic way. So I take it this has been going on for a long time. Continuing on with our investigation, we are outside of your residence, Jessica. A few moments later, we see Wade walk outside. Our detectives follow him for quite a distance, and he arrives at this rehab facility. That's when we see him park his car right next to that unknown female's. She gets out and she greets him with a hug. They go inside together. A while later, we see Wade escorted out by this unknown female. She then gets into the passenger side of Wade's car. A long time passes, and the unknown female walks over to the driver's side, leans in 
for a few minutes and gives Wade a farewell kiss, proceeds to get into her vehicle, and Wade returns home for the evening. Jessica, seeing this, does this make sense yeah. to, to his behavior? Yeah. Jessica, at this point in time, we know where they're at. They're at that rehab facility. So what I'd like to do is get on the move. We'll get some details from Gomez, and we'll go from there. Okay. Are you ready to confront them? Yes. Okay, right this way. The main thing I want you to concentrate on, Jessica, is we want to get answers from Wade and uh, really figure out why he did this. How are you feeling at this point in time? Sick to my stomach and really upset. Okay, we're actually here. It's gonna be right there. Plano Injury Rehab, and there is Detective Gomez. Great. And so just remember, the main thing I want you to get from this guy is your answers. Oh, here's Gomez right here. How are you, man? Good, good, good. How are you, Trey? Very good. He had an appointment at 1 o'clock. They rode together in his car today. Okay? Let's go now. Everyone ready? Let's, ready? Go. Let's go. Everyone out. What the f is this? <laughs> this is Cheaters. Are you aware that this man has had a girlfriend for about three years? They live together? Wait. Oh my gosh. What is, what is all this? Can we taste it? Hey, what? What? All we're doing no. is just trying to get answers from you, man. Wade, can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here, man? Wade? <laughs> Who is this girl? I'm his girlfriend. Who are you? I'm his girlfriend. No, you're not. What is all of this? <laughs> what have you been doing? What's been going on for the last six months? Coming up, the conclusion. Who the f is this? <laughs> Who is this girl? I'm his girlfriend. Who are you? I'm his girlfriend. No, you're not. What's been going on for the last six months? Are you kidding me? This is a joke, right? No, he, she actually has a daughter. Where do you that he live raises. at? Like, because we've been living together raises, for three years. This is his daughter in my what stomach do you mean right his now. Daughter? This is his daughter. Yeah, this he's is been raising my, my daughter. This is his baby. What are you doing? So you're pregnant? Yeah, I'm pregnant. Well, well, well the truth is. is actually on surveillance because she hired us to come and find out why um, he was. Uh, I've been with her. And we come out here and we find I have a child with her. And he never told you that she was his girlfriend? No, he doesn't have another girlfriend. I'm his only girlfriend. I should have told you that. Three years. Three years. Three years. Another girlfriend? They, You're the other girlfriend. They do share a home together. You share a home with her? What the f are you talking about? I'm sorry. I, I, I hate that, like, you have to find out, like, this. Like, it shouldn't be like this, but. I mean, do you remember talking to her on the phone a couple days ago, Wade? You were telling her you're taking the trash taking out. Taking out the trash. When you had just finished talking. Trash. With whoa, whoa. Trash? Whoa. Excuse me? No, no. Don't don't go there with that. No one's going to call anybody names, so what's okay? What's that? Wade, what's this? Do you remember this day? Took out for coffee. Went to a restaurant. Yeah. Shared a meal yeah, together. I remember that. Uh, what are you doing with her, though? Like, what are you doing with her? I'm not doing anything with her. I, I, I don't want anything to do with her. You don't want anything to do with no. her? So then, yeah, you've been in her house, my house, right? I don't care. I don't care what you do with it. Like, how long has this been going on? I mean, it's been going on for about a year and a half now, I guess. Oh my gosh. A year and a half. So how do you think her parents are gonna feel when they see this knowing that you've raised her daughter? How do you think my daughter, daughter is gonna feel? I love this woman and I'm, and, and I have, I'm having a baby with her and... Have you ever been inside of his residence? Inside of his, no, he's, he stays with me all the time. So doesn't that make you kind of question that? Why he wouldn't let you into his own residence if he had nothing to hide? I mean, I don't, I don't go to his house. He comes to my house, like that's how it is. But you do park outside of his house. You don't go to his, his house. house. Now, have you ever wondered why? You did this to both of these girls. You lied to her, and I, you know, that's that's one thing. But this woman is pregnant with your child. Yeah, I know. How did you guys How meet did in the first meet? place? I I met her up at her work, and I've just been, you know, getting to know her. And yeah, obviously, like we're having a baby now. And it's like I have responsibilities. Like I'm the father of her child, of our child. What happened to my child? What happened to those responsibilities? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Guys, we need to like Not take this I... outside. Seriously, I've got. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I mean, you guys are no problem. We apologize. Totally affected. Come on, this... our protocols. You guys need to take it out. I'm sorry, but. <clears throat> Back up. 
first of all. Back up, stop. back up. You need to stop touching uh, I'm not gonna put my hands on obviously, you, back obviously up. Obviously, he said he back does not want to be. He's you already he's already told you how it feels. He doesn't want to be with you anymore. How do you think he feels about you? How do you think he feels about you? What is he gonna tell you later? He just told you that he doesn't want to be with you. Uh, I think that you should take that as a hint and walk away right yeah, now. Yeah, just let it go. No. Just let it go. He's got it. Oh my god. Let's get out of here. What are you what are you You're doing? You're not leaving. Yeah, I am. No, leaving. not with her. Look, I'm sorry. I've said everything I can say. Why? Why? Why couldn't you tell me a year and a half ago? Because you're a sweet girl and I was waiting for the right time and I didn't want it to be like this. A year and a half. A year and a half. I don't know. I'm sorry. That's all you have to say. That's it. That's all I have to say. I'm going to get out of here. Hey, this is up to you right now. What do you want to do? I'm done. All right. We'll let them drive away. We'll load up and we'll get out of here, okay? Watch your backs. I'm really sorry about this, but listen, hey, someone like that that's gonna go and double cross, not only you, but, I mean, he's got that girl pregnant. He's lying to her. It's like you, I don't think that you need that in your life, do you? No. All right, let's get you loaded. Following the confrontation, Jessica knows her path has become difficult. We'll update you on her decision later in the show. But first, Cheaters welcomes John Franklin. John comes forward to clear the air when he was confronted by his girlfriend on Cheaters. I'm adjusting her bra, you know. She starts, you know, rubbing on me and uh, things got a little heated. Uh, so I'm a man, my natural was, response was to rub a little back before I know it, we're, you know. And uh, then in comes Alexis. I mean, the timing was perfect. I mean, we were in there a good minute. And uh, she came and kicked the door in and started swinging and it was chaos. Patricia at a club, out having drinks. She told me about some issues that she was going with, with her other half. And uh, I told her about some issues I was going with with my other half in the sex department. You know what I mean? Um, I wasn't getting the attention at home. I felt like I deserved, and neither was she. We started drinking, having a good time, hanging out, going to church, <laughs> stuff like that. And uh, we ended up taking care of each other's issues. What the f you in my car? Man, I love you, this bitch Look, I love you, man. That ain't nasty ass. Oh, oh, man. Man. That's bitch. But that's that's no. nothing. Nasty ass. That's nothing. Are you coming out? Come on, out? What man. You come on, man. 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 You, me and Patricia, we're, you know, we still talk, but she's not trying to get caught up in anything like that anymore. As far as Alexis, uh, tried to talk to her a couple of days after that happened, and it was it was like uh, positive and negative, you know, just a bad, uh, just a, just a real bad uh, conversation. Didn't it didn't go anywhere, you know what I mean? So uh, I wish her the best as well, and I hope. Uh, She's happy in whatever she's doing in the future. Following the confrontation, Jessica McCarthy discloses her decision to let her former boyfriend leave. Jessica states firmly, no drama. I wasn't even there when he grabbed his stuff and left. I don't want to ever see him again. When contacted by Cheater's producers, the suspect admits that his actions were despicable. Wade tells Cheaters, yeah, I messed up bad. I wish to God I could take everything back. 
I lost both of them, and now I've got a kid on the way. With someone who doesn't even want me now. Just my luck. The suspect states he plans to step up and be the best father he can. As for her part in the affair, the companion, Mandy, explains to cheaters, I can't believe Wade did this to me. To both of us. I really thought he was the one, but now I'm going to be a single mother. The companion also makes it clear that although she must allow Wade to be the father to their soon-to-be child, Mandy refuses to have it. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Well, when she found out she wasn't pregnant, she was a little, she was a little hurt by it. Um, she knew how excited I was to, you know, become a father and how excited she was to become a mother. You know, everything happened for a reason sometimes and when we found out and it, it, it kind of left a little sour taste between us, but we still were strong together. And then like a month later, everything started changing with her work schedule. She started working more. She started just doing the things that she'd never been doing in the full two years that we've been together. Taylor, age 27, an office worker accused of mixing business and pleasure. Upon receiving their briefing from headquarters, Cheater's agents set up a perimeter around the suspect's workplace. Long after dark, Taylor emerges from the building. The suspect gets into her car and drives off. Upon arrival at a coffee shop, the suspect enthusiastically greets an unidentified man. Taking a table on the patio, the male caresses the suspect's hand. A while later, the pair leave, strolling down the avenue. The suspect and her friend find a restaurant and go inside to eat. Well, um, I remember this one incident. Uh, she was out on the trip. She told me she was going out to Los Angeles. And she was uh, basically letting me know that the area has no service, her phone would be off, and everything would be off. So I was like, OK. But I was on Facebook. And I saw that her um, icon was on for the messages, the uh, instant message. And I was just thinking, like, well, how does she have that up if she's in an area where she can't have any service? Well, when she, when Taylor got back to the, from the L.A. trip, I had confronted her about, you know, being on Facebook and on the internet. And what she told me was that she had went to the stock car racing. After their sumptuous meal, the suspect and her dinner date kiss each other goodbye. It takes a few minutes before the goodbyes have been spoken. Cheaters investigators note that the suspect takes a long route to get back to her home. Man, if she's cheating on me, I, I honestly wouldn't know how to react. I'd be devastated, hurt. Um, the whole nine, like, I have dedicated so much time to this woman and been through so much with her. She's seen my growth from where I was. And it just seems like if, if she's cheating on me, man, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to handle it. Working another late night, the suspect has no clue that Cheater's investigators work late as well. So when Taylor finally leaves for the evening, she has no idea that a cheater's mobile team pursues her across town to a fast food restaurant. Upon arrival, the suspect meets with the man from previous surveillance, now identified as Larry Jones. The suspect greets Jones with a tight hug before they go inside. After the meal concludes, Jones escorts Taylor to her vehicle. The suspect pulls away from the curb. The cheater's detectives tail the illicit couple strangely enough to an automated car wash. The last image of the couple seen by Cheater's operatives happens through a sudsy screen. A few minutes later, a clean car emerges and enters the street. But Taylor's bad deeds are not so easily washed away. The suspect drops Jones off at his vehicle before calling it a night and driving the long route back to a lonely house. With the suspect's pattern established, Cheater's detectives continue to stake out around Taylor's workplace. Late at night, the suspect leaves, driving to a nearby park. Already, Jones awaits the suspect. Taylor and her date settle down on a park bench. The suspect gets amazingly friendly with her paramour. 
Things heat up a little on that chilly night when Taylor flings her leg over Jones's. The suspect allows her companion to keep warm by rubbing on her thighs. Sometime later, the suspect heads home as Cheaters goes back to headquarters to prep the case file for Tom. Coming up, the confrontation. Confirming the suspect's lies and deceit, Cheaters approaches Tom for a review of all findings, remaining unconvinced but determined to see what truth Cheaters brings. Tom, first thing I want to say is thank you for coming out this evening. It's no problem. Uh, I understand we had to pull you away from work. My question for you is, as you know, we have conducted our investigation and come up with some findings. Are you prepared to see that? Yeah. All right. Tom, we begin our investigation outside of Taylor's work. And sometime later, we see Taylor walk outside. Our detectives follow her for some time, and she arrives at a coffee shop. That's when we see her get out and meet this unknown man. They hug and sit down with some coffee. A while later, they finish up their cup of coffee, walk across the street, and go into a restaurant. That's when we get the shot of them sharing a meal together. They leave the restaurant they return to their vehicles and embrace with a hug. She gets into her vehicle and arrives at your home for the evening. So I'm continuing on with our investigation. We're outside of Taylor's workplace. A few months later, we see Taylor emerge. She gets into her vehicle, and then she arrives at a park. The gentleman from the previous day is already there waiting. That's when we see her get out of her car, but then she receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tom, tell me if you remember this or if this rings a bell. Hey, baby, what's up? Hey, babe, I was trying to see what you was doing. Oh, nothing. Just uh, got off this 10-minute break. I'm about to go into this meeting. What oh, you need? man. Well, I was just wondering if you could stop by and get some milk. Felt like cooking for you tonight. All right, I'm going to get some milk, but I don't know how late it's going to be because I'm about to walk into this meeting. Well, I got to turn my phone off. Well, so. babe, you're always going to meetings, so what's, wh why are you always in these meetings? Baby, I got to go because my boss is in here looking at me sideways. I'm going to talk to you later, all right? I love you, and I'll see you later. I love you, too. Her boss is looking at her sideways. She's not even at work. After getting off the phone with you, Tom, she then walks over and sits on a bench with that unknown male. After a few moments of them sitting and talking and whispering things in her ear, she then swings her leg over his and they lean in for a playful kiss. Tom, I know that's a lot to see. I know this is very hard. This is someone that you care about and hold close to you. You all right, man? Listen. At this time, Tom, we know exactly where they're at. They're at a secluded parking lot. Our detectives on location have been seeing and watching them for about 30 to 40 minutes now. So it's, it's go time right now. Are you ready to do this? Yeah. All right, right this way. Right there. Come on! Man, who the bro, who, who are you, bro? What's up, bro? What's up? What's up? What's up? What the hell? What are you doing here? Why you got all these cameras over here? I thought you was at work. Why would you do this to your boyfriend? What the hell? That's what I'm talking about. Oh my goodness. Y'all, it's not there for real. Oh. Taylor, Taylor, what the f is this to your boy? Cameras? Two years old, man. You got cameras? Where is this Did Taylor tell you she was with, she had a boyfriend? Man, we can't do this, man. How did her stuff? We finna leave right now. What's your name? What's your name? Man, I'm Larry, man. First of all, you need to calm down. You don't even she know what's going on. So she told you that they were broken up, Laramie? Man, she's been trying to leave. Man. Well, what did she tell you she was doing when she was back in Dallas? Did she tell you she was away from him for good? Or she's just been kind of keeping it light? She's been with me. I gave you 
and everything, man. But that's all of me. what I wanted. I gave I you all of me. All that I wanted you to me out. I wanted you to make me happy. But you didn't do that. I told you that. How long have you guys been doing this? How long has this been going on? Man, it's been about, about six months. About six months? Look, I was gonna tell you. You didn't have you to do all say this. Stop lying. You didn't have to do all this. I was gonna tell you what was going on. They trying to do this some more? Nah, I don't say oh. Coming up next, the conclusion. Come on! Who are you working? What's up, I'm working. How long has this been going on? About six months. I was gonna tell you. You didn't have you to go say this. Stop lying. You didn't have to. Really? Everything, you bro. got me out here in the rain with all these cameras in my mother's face. See who she with. Man. Who she with? What's up? What's up? There, What's up, there, there. What's up, there, bro? There. Stop. What the f No, I don't. Y'all, y'all fall for y'all following me. me. Everything was cool. They would have never me, saw each other him. if it weren't for y'all. They would never saw each other. That's all you gotta say. Never at all. You was but, me. Not even sorry or anything. You we thought we I was told having him. a baby. Hey, watch out, Robbie. I want to give you everything. I want you to be my wife. Look, Are you gonna leave me for this? Hold on. So when you went to LA, did you ever go to LA? Let me talk to him real quick. So when you was in LA, was you with this? You said the last six I was I was doing work. He was and me. I mean, I'm I took work. lunch breaks with I'm him. Work. I took a lunch break with him. Okay. I met him out there. Okay. When doing your part. Uh, it was nothing. We started off as I'm friends, so it was nothing. But I mean. So what happened? That made took it to the next step besides you friends. Where you decided? We started hanging out. Shut up. I started you liking him a little bit more. How you doing? Was talking to And that's when I realized, like, what the? I'm living a boring life. I go to work. I come home, you go to work, bored. come home, cook, bored. all that. I'm, I'm tired. I'm like, tired. I mean, Larry. I, I completely Why understand. Larry, Larry, but how come you didn't tell me? Look, 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 I'm young. I'm trying to have fun. Dog, let me talk to my girl, bro. Man, hey, man keep me back. No, no. Hey, no, talk. Quick. Talk, man. Don't even talk to him. Talk to me. You little buddy. You Do you love this man? Out. She coming home with me. You feel me? You just seen what was going on. Why are y'all asking that? What? That has nothing to do with nothing right now. All this time? You came to my life, built me up, just to break me down like this? You're a good dude, and you just need somebody like who's ready to like, you know, who like a home person, okay? Look, 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 hey! Stop! Look, how long have I been trying to get pregnant? I haven't been, okay? And once I have, and I lost it, I realized like, so you want to mess with him? Huh? You want to mess him before he was pregnant? Before we thought he was pregnant? I was. It, I knew it was yours. So you, it was yours. It could not have been It mine? was yours. It was yours. But, I mean. So does it worry you? Like, do you think that she could be possibly doing this with someone else behind your back if she did this to him, yeah, like, over time? She was 100 with me from the jump. I've been new about this, you know what I'm saying? I chose to get in this. I understand, man. I ain't tripping. Come on, baby. Let's go. You see these cameras on my face, man. Do you have anything else to say? Come on, you see these cameras on my out. face. Let's go. Come on. Come on, baby. No, hold on. I need to finish this real quick. Hold on. I need him to understand something real quick, though. Look, Tom, 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 Tom. You are a good dude. I realize you're not my type. You. When you're still living with him. Oh, yeah, but I was leaving him, okay? But why wouldn't you tell him that before you go out and you do this? Because he's a good dude. Like, I didn't want to hurt his feelings. I was going to leave while he was gone. Like, if you told him the truth, you don't think he'd respect you more for that instead of hurting I didn't want to see this. I didn't want to see this. Look. Man, what's up? I know you want to see how you got it. Let me go. Nah, let me go, bro. Let me go, bro. She got me out here looking at a fool. You got to realize that Larry is my dude. Larry's your dude? Yes, but I didn't want to tell him because I didn't want him coming after me. Future no. truth is the no, best thing right? that you could do. Yeah. To tell the truth, you're, you're I don't need this. you to work out my relationships, okay? Uh -huh. I got this under control. I'm just, you got I mean, this, this, like this would have never happened. Control. This would never happen if y'all didn't bring him no. here. I brought them no, here to follow you. You could have asked him, was I cheating? You was at the, was there you was at the damn part talking about, oh. You want to keep, you, you want to keep this a secret. Why are you still lying?
And tell and the truth. Ask me, why you gonna go to somebody else when I'm well, right I'm here in your face you. every day? See? Every day, you every ain't night, you I'm ain't in your even face. You could have asked me. How can I ask you something when you're not even you talking to me? Saying I love you, you're at work. I was cooking for you, and you out here in the park making out this right here, man. Man, you, bro. Look, you could have left. You could have left. I'm about to leave. What if the tables were turning and you were standing bro, right here? I ain't perfect. Oh, we all human. I ain't perfect. Wait, can you apologize, I maybe? I did. And you're gonna you do can find another girl. Hey! That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> What's up, homeboy? I mean, I'm about to go to... Go, you want to get out of here? All right, let's yeah. load up. I'm about to go to California, so if I see you, I see you. I mean, I hear my mom. Get damn camera on my face. Man. Hold up. Hey, man, what's up? Hey, Failing to reconcile with his now ex-girlfriend, Tom LeBlanc determines to rebuild his life. At the end of the show, Cheaters divulges his plans. But first, Cody Harleton returns to give an update on the night his girlfriend was caught with his cousin on Cheaters. Um, whenever we prepared for the bus and I actually ran in there, um, it, it, it's a lot different whenever you see it on the camera than whenever you actually walk in and physically see my cousin sleeping with my girlfriend. And like at that point, I was just, I mean, I was just ready to really whip his ass, honestly. It definitely put everything into perspective. And I knew that she had to go and he had to have his ass whipped. Get the up. 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 Where are you going? Can I talk to you for a second? Let me talk for a second. Hey man, where are you going? Bobby, why are you running? As far as Victoria goes, that night we had no communication. It went probably for about two or three days until she started trying to call and I was not trying to have that. Like whenever I set my mind of she's got to go, she had to go. And uh, yeah, of course she tried, you know, being all sympathetic, like no, it was just a one time thing, an accident. But obviously, like from seeing the footage, they had kind of orchestrated it at least a few weeks prior. Get your bitch ass tell down, bro! Dude, tell me. You're on the roof in the first place! I don't know, man. Like, we just be all hanging out together a lot, and he's been gone a lot. Came on to me a long time ago, about three months ago. Get the out of here! Just give him a second, man. I'm just trying to get you some answers, bro. So, do you have. Can you at least tell him why you would do this, dude? She, she came to me, and it was like in a situation where. Me and her bonded, we connected together, and we, you know what I mean, we shuck and job together, man. Like, me and her, good together. Class move. Um, really, I'm just trying to stay focused with school. Um, since that whole ordeal broke out with Victoria and Robbie, like, I don't know, it kind of set my path straight, and really, it was kind of surreal, you know what I mean? Because I had originally planned a future with her, and obviously never expected my cousin to be sleeping with my girlfriend. And, uh, but yeah, after that, I'm just been saying focus with school, uh, got the um, family business going well, and uh, moving forward, moving forward. After the failure of his relationship, Tom LeBlanc declares that Cupid doesn't have love for him, at least for the time being. Tom says, I'm done with Taylor. She completely ruined me for other women, and I can't believe that she'd play us both like that. The suspect only has complaints about her previous boyfriend and the way he handles things. Taylor attempted to point fingers at Tom, yet refuses to view any footage of her shown by cheaters. When approached by cheaters producers, the companion, Larry Jones, openly admits that he and the suspect plan on moving in together once he gets her out to California. Jones says, we're happy together and will be. Per Access the Truth, I'm Clark Gable and this is Cheaters. Me and Nick's relationship, it used to be amazing and it just used to be so passionate and just so into me and 
When he used to come home from work, he used to come home promptly on time, like he couldn't wait to get to me. And now it's like he come home three hours late and it's steady getting later and later. And he really didn't used to do this much at work. I really don't remember the beginning, late days at all. Nick Wesson, age 27, a stockroom manager suspected of increasing his supply of women. After a briefing at headquarters, cheaters professionals circle up around the suspect's place of employment. They spot their mark sometime after sundown. The suspect emerges with an unknown female. Wesson escorts the young lady to his vehicle. The pair drive to a nearby restaurant. Wesson chaperones the unknown woman into the restaurant. Inside, the pair grab a table. They converse as they wait for their food. Getting cozy, the young woman rubs the scruff of the suspect's chin strap beard. Our intimacy level, when it first started off, um, Nick was a guy with a lot of energy, and sometimes it used to be twice a day or three times a day, and it's like I have to influence him now every time I try to get close to him. Sometimes he'll push me away. Sometimes he'll say he's not in the mood. And it's just hurt because he used to be the person that always influences, you know, and the person that was always so passionate about being intimate with me. But now me having to take the lead, and now he's not even wanting to give me no response back, really. He has to be getting it from someone else. A couple of hours later, the suspect and his paramour exit the restaurant in an intimate manner. In gentlemanly fashion, Wesson finesses the unknown woman to his SUV. Then the suspect drives the woman back to his workplace and drops her off, which ends this day of surveillance. I never really had a father, and I always said, hey, when I grow up, I'm going to do the opposite thing that my mom did. You know, I'm going to have me a husband, and my husband's going to be there to take care of my kids. And I just, I don't want to end up like my mom. I don't want to end up lonely. I just, I want somebody to be there for me. I want somebody to take care of me and take care of mine. If he is cheating on me, I mean, there is a whole nother side of me that will come out, and I don't want it to come out. So I want to find out if he's cheating on me or not, because this is not the man that he says he would promise to be. Cheaters detectives continue to stake out Wesson's workplace. The surveillance team catches the suspect coming out of the building with the same female as before. The woman accompanies Wesson to a drive through fast food restaurant. After getting their food, the suspect pulls into a dark part of the parking lot. Wesson gets out and walks around to the rear of the vehicle. He retrieves a gift and presents a bouquet of flowers to his date, now identified only as Elizabeth. The admirer drives them both back to his workplace. The suspect drops off his paramour and drives home for the evening. Cheaters investigators continue the stakeout around Wesson's workplace. The suspect leaves this evening and drives to a convenience store. Wesson comes out a few minutes later with a bottle wrapped in paper. The suspect leads the cheaters observation squad through town to a hotel. He walks into the front office and returns to his SUV moments later. The suspect moves his vehicle and parks in front of his hotel room. As Wesson goes into his room, Cheater's detectives must wait it out. And sure enough, Elizabeth arrives and parks next to her paramour's SUV. The suspect comes out of the room and eagerly hustles his plaything inside. And Cheater's detectives wrap up the case. Coming up, the confrontation.
Gathering an abundance of footage proving Weston's multitude of infidelities, Cheater summons Rashada to review the case facts. With angst in her heart, Rashada steps up to the plate to have her view of the truth. Rashada, I want to say thank you for coming out this evening. As you know, we have conducted our investigation. Um, my question for you is, are you prepared to see that? I think so. OK. Rashada, on this day of our investigation, we are outside of Nick's workplace. A few moments later, he emerges with this unknown female walking together. They then get into Nick's vehicle, and they leave. Our detectives follow them as they arrive at a restaurant. They stop, go inside. That's when we get the shot of them sitting together, enjoying a meal. After finishing up their meal sometime later, they walk out hand in hand. Nick opens the car door for her and escorts her into his vehicle. So this is starting to make a little bit more sense. Yes. On this day of our investigation, we are outside of Nick's workplace. A few moments later, he emerges with that same unknown female. They walk out together get into Nick's vehicle. A short time later, detectives follow them as they arrive at a fast food joint. They get some food, park the car, begin to eat, converse back and forth. That's when we see Nick go to the back of his vehicle and retrieves what I see is a bouquet of flowers. She gets the flowers, smears them in her face in joy, smiling, and they embrace for a very long and romantic kiss. Continuing on with our investigation, we are outside of Nick's workplace. Pulls out a cigarette, begins scanning through his phone, and a few moments later, he receives a phone call. Rashada, tell me if you remember this. Hey, babe. How you doing tonight, baby? I'm good, and you? I, uh, I got some, got some fun news tonight. I gotta stay a little bit late. Gotta run some papers over to, uh, Micah's. Really? You know, yeah, yeah, you know, you met him before over at the Christmas party last year. It really needs to be on JP's desk, uh, or JP's, he's gonna... He's gonna throw a little fit. Yeah, I know how JP is. Okay, well, would you mind just stopping by and picking up a movie? Because I got some things to do. I still have some chores to do later on tonight. Absolutely, baby. Thanks, babe. Do you remember that night? I don't know. Okay, so after finishing up the phone call with you, Nick proceeds to get into his vehicle. He drives out of his workplace. Hmm. And he arrives at a convenience store. We see him walk inside. He comes out holding a bag with some items in it. Our detectives follow Nick as he gets into his vehicle, and he arrives at a hotel. A few months later, he goes into the hotel, gets a room. Getting rooms. Sometime later, he exits. That's when we see him move his vehicle closer to the room that he just got. So Nick gets out of his vehicle, does a quick check around the premises, and a few moments later, that woman from the previous day arrives. She embraces Nick with a hug, and they enter the hotel room. I can't believe this. Rashada, we dove into our investigation a little bit deeper and uncovered some pretty interesting things about this unknown woman. Her name is Elizabeth. She was flown out to Nick's work about three months ago from Lithuania, and she actually is married and has a significant other, a husband, okay. in Lithuania. Yes. So do certain things make a lot more sense? I mean, between his behavior that's changed? It's starting. Starting to? I see why. With that being said, I don't want to waste any more time. I'd like to go confront them. Mm. My yeah. question is, you ready? Let's go. Right this way, please. Right this way, we shot him. Watch your step. You ready? I'm ready. All right. right there. there he is, right there. Really? Really? So this is the kind of things I get? Hey, this is the kind of things I get? Hey, bro, hey, bro, really? Hey, really? Hey, what you hey, got hey, going hey, on? What you doing, man? Hey, girl. Hey. Really? Yeah, this is the treatment I get? Calm down. For real? Calm down. Calm down. For real? Now. Now. What, it looks now. Like. what, what hey, you hey, mean? Baby, it ain't baby, what it looks like. What you mean? What? Are you married? You need to calm down. You need to calm down. Yeah. Do you, do you know that this is this man's girlfriend? I heard that, yes. Coming up, the conclusion.
right this way. Shot him. Watch your step. There he is right there. Really? So this the kind of things I get? Hey, this the kind of bro, I get? Do you know that this is this man's girlfriend? I heard that, yes. You on a date with whoever you work with? It's not a date. Really? It's not a date. Really? You know well, what is it? Hey. Um, just, she's all good. Look, there's nothing going on here. Look. And who are you? Where you come from? Is this natural to you? So you gonna tell me who you are? Huh? Huh? Why you Why you gotta touch me? You don't have to put your hands on me or nothing at all. Going to me? Don't put your hands on me at all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, just calm down, okay? You don't, you no. don't need to be. No. You don't need to be no. animals don't, here. Don't, don't touch me. Who are you? Why are you with him? Why? We How the going on? You know we working say. together. Yeah, this is not work. This this is shopping. These are clothes. What are you What are you doing? You see, you see. Forget it. You can't even. You can't even. I want to you and your boyfriend making out. Excuse huh? me. About, huh? Excuse boyfriend. me. What? So what you gonna do? Look, girl. Look, look. What you gonna do? What do you think what is you gonna, gonna happen? Do? This is what look, you call treating me special. Man, that. This is what you call treating me special. This way, this like, is special. You, look, how long were this you with your ex husband for? This even happened, right? I don't give a right? damn. Why, right? why, 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 why are you bringing him up? Why are you bringing him up? This is special why, 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 to you. You, you, you said this Remember, was I'm special. Sitting here. But you said this was special, yeah. though. So do you think when your husband sees this, he's going to think that you're still together with him? You don't think he'll be upset? I don't care at this moment. I just don't care. You don't care? Mm -mm. Bye. You don't want me. Girl, you don't even. Bye. You don't even. You don't want me. You don't even know you don't what's going me. on. You don't even know you what's going on. You don't want me. Look, you need to calm down. You don't down. want me. You need to calm don't down. It. Look, baby, don't, baby, 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 baby. Go ahead and calm on to her. Go ahead and calm on to her. I'm already taking care of you. You don't want me. I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. Your ex-husband won't do. Sit your ass out. You don't want me. I don't even no. understand what's going on right now. How you gonna say? How you gonna say? How you gonna sit there and say you love me? You love I me, do love you, and baby. I want another I do chance love you, at this. I do love you. And you want another baby, chance baby, at baby. this. Baby. Forget you. No, because that's all bullshit that you feed me. That's all bullshit. How's this my fault? Go ahead and back cross country. How's this my fault? Go ahead and back cross country. I worked my and ass off. Oh court. yeah. Did you not know that she was married too? Did you? So go ahead and go you're back house country. We got okay. Yeah, you're but married? that was then. But this is now. I'm not for my husband. She ain't gonna leave her husband for you. Yes, she is. Watch. No, she ain't. Watch, so I watch. wish she would. Watch. I wish she would. Well, put you under arrest there for assault. So did you get for bringing all this bull involved? That's enough. Shut up. I work here. We've got some more. Oh, you do? Yes. All right. Let's take care of this one. Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, this is Friend. Have you ever had these before? Absolutely. Get out of there. Hey, hey go. Now we're going to start arresting people. All right, guys, load up, guys. Load up. Load up. Do you have any ID on you? Nope. Well, female's coming and searching you. Anyways. Huh? Female's on her way to search you. Yeah, we didn't sign anything. To get the story a little bit more straight, my client and I came in here to bust her boyfriend, who was cheating on her. They'd been together for three years. The third party, we actually had some information on her that she was flown out here from Lithuania to work at his insurance office. They've been together since then, and he's been cheating on her. We come to confront them. They call the police on us. Now my client is detained in handcuffs and sitting in the back of a police car. Our suspect who was cheated on her in the first place is now sitting there, not in handcuffs, and she's in trouble. Uh, that's holding 646 Main Street. It's one thing when you, you know, we get involved, but when the police get involved, it's like there's nothing we can do about it. People get arrested. That's what happens. Yeah, it sucks. Time. Let's go, load up. An unexpected arrest causes even more pain to the already frustrated Rashada. 
Cheaters catches up with her to give you an exclusive look at the following day when Rashad is released from jail. We're going to pick up our client. She's over here at the county jail. Our producer just picked her up, so she seems to be in good spirits, and um, we're gonna go get her. They should be walking down this ramp. This is new for us. I guess there's always surprises with the show. Let's go. <clears throat> So at this time, our client has been charged with assault. I don't really know much further than that. We're gonna come pick her up and take her back. I'm just happy to know that she's in good spirits. That's all that matters to me. There she comes. Oh my gosh, she has the shoes on and everything. Rashada, how are you? I'm so sorry about last night. It's okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> everything okay though? Oh, I'm good. You good? Do you need anything right now? We'll go get you some food, it's anything you want. Right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, let's get you out of here. Oh, they gave you some Crocs. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't we get you out of here? Um, you know, that what happened last night never happens. And I truly apologize for that. For right now, let's get you out from uh, jail. Let's just get away from here, guys. Get her in the van. For the most part, we shouldn't have anything to worry about as far as um, the, the court case. He's not going to press charges or anything like that. He might have to show up, but that's it. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm really, really sorry about this, Rashada. It wasn't my, it wasn't my intention. I wasn't, wasn't thinking this was going to happen at all. Just to let you know, we are taking care of all this. Uh, those charges will be dropped, and all your court fees, any of that stuff, will all be taken care of to the fullest extent. Um, but I want to truly apologize, me and the crew, for that happening last night because you, you watch our show and there's always police involved, but I've never had a client arrested. Is there anything else you'd like to say to our audience that's watching that could possibly learn from this situation? Well, first of all, no man is worth spending a night in jail over. You know, I had to spend a night in jail just for this whole situation because I found out he was cheating on me and I had to go to jail and do the time. It's just a waste of my time and it's uncalled for and I deserve better and there's better out there. Thank you. According to Roshada Greer, the arrest during the confrontation only served to drive in the final coffin nails on her relationship. Roshada admits that things don't go well for her now. Cheaters producers offer counseling, and for now, Roshada tentatively agrees to go. As for the suspect's deceitful actions, when questioned by Cheaters producers, Nick Wesson confessed he took things too far. The suspect declares he loves the companion, and as soon as Elizabeth divorces her husband, Wesson will ask her to marry him. When contacted by Cheaters producers, the companion, Elizabeth, decried all actions by Cheaters and continues to refuse to answer. Instructor, recognizing his need for assistance, Daniel comes in requesting the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. The business venture me and Kelly have started um, is actually a yoga, yoga company. Um, she's a huge fitness um, fanatic, and so am I. And I just thought that was a great way for us to put our love into something that we really, truly love. But after a couple of months into the business, um, things started to change. Kelly Delgado, age 26 a yoga studio co-owner suspected of adding an instructor to teach her some new but unacceptable stretches. After a short briefing on the particulars of the case, Cheaters deploys a team of investigators to the home the suspect shares with Daniel. Before long, Cheaters agents spot the suspect leaving the home. She arrives at an affluent bank and greets an unknown male with a big hug. Paperwork in hand, the two trapes inside. A short while later, the pair go back outside. The two get into the companion's vehicle, and she and the mysterious partner drive away. 
When I noticed some changes in the relationship was when Kelly started not replying um, back to my texts, my phone calls. Um, she would just ignore it for hours. Uh, I've noticed that she's been putting a lot more hours into the business than she should because I'm the owner of the business and she's just the assistant. I believe that she's been less intimate with me and she's avoiding to have sex with me so she's staying longer hours. Suspect Delgado and her lunch date arrive at an upscale restaurant. Taking a table on the patio, the pair chat and laugh over the meal. After finishing, the twosome walk out to his car and leave. Delgado returns to the bank. Upon arriving at her parked car, the suspect leaps out and gives her private partner a goodbye hug. Delgado then returns home to a neglected Daniel. Just the way I've treated her, I have did nothing but give her all my love, all my heart, and I need to know what's going on because I just love her. Cheaters detectives continue their watch of the suspect. Delgado drives to Daniel's day job and goes inside. After speaking with Daniel for a few minutes, Delgado leaves. Tailed by a cheater's team, she arrives at a shopping center. The suspect goes upstairs where she meets the man from previous surveillance, now identified by cheaters as Todd Minzer. Delgado and Menzer get into his sedan and drive to another shopping center. The pair innocently look at other spaces for rent, but Delgado's deceit runs high, as shown when the couple make it back to Menzer's car. Delgado pauses for a quick covert smooch before getting into the sedan. As the sun sets on the illicit pair, Menzer drops the suspect off at her vehicle, and then Delgado drives home to a trusting Daniel. Cheater's detectives spot the suspect leaving in her SUV. Delgado drives to an unknown residence, which further investigation reveals belongs to her companion. Menzer greets the suspect at the door and allows her entry. A short time later, Delgado and her limber companion emerge from the building. Delgado allows Menzer to whisk her away to a Mexican restaurant. The pair go inside and grab a cozy booth. The suspect may claim innocence, however, her actions come across as too familiar and flirty. Sometime later, the two-timing twins finish their meal, and satisfying their hunger but not their cravings for each other, the suspect and her guru drive all the way to Menzer's residence. There, the suspect accompanies her lover inside. A few hours later, a disheveled Delgado leaves, returning home to a distraught Daniel. Cheaters wraps up the case and proceeds to collate all the facts for Daniel. Coming up, the confrontation. With the suspect's devious backroom business meetings now coming to light, Cheaters contacts Daniel. As growing apprehension grips his heart, Daniel mans up and forces himself to view the truth. First thing I'd like to say, Daniel, is thank you for coming out today. Sure. I understand that you've been having some issues with your relationship. Yeah. As you know, we have conducted our investigation. Okay. My question for you is, are you prepared to see what we have come up with? Yes. Fair enough. Yes. On this day of our investigation, we are following Kelly from her home. She arrives at your work. Do you remember this day? Yes, she dropped off some paperwork that she had to sign for the yoga company. Okay, so after she received that paperwork from you, she then arrives at this shopping center. She parks her vehicle, walks up the stairs, and begins to canvas different empty stores. That's when we see her greeted by this gentleman. Do you know him? That is Todd. Who's Todd? Todd is my business partner for my yoga business. I hired him just to help us out with okay. me and Kelly. Okay, well, continuing on, they walk down the stairs, and that's when Kelly receives a phone call, Daniel. What you're about to hear is audio from that phone call. Okay. You tell me if you remember this. Sure. Hey, babe. How are you? I'm good. What are you up to? I'm actually checking out a, um, a studio space. 
it's pretty cool. I think you should um, check it out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I got. I definitely need to make some time for that. Have you talked to Todd earlier? No. I try. I try to get him on the phone and just not picking up. If I hear from him, I'll. I'll uh, tell him to give you a call. Yeah, definitely. Let let, let him know. Um, I'll see you later okay. tonight. Okay. I'll see you later. Love you. All right. Love you too. I knew there was something wrong. After finishing up the phone call with you saying I love you too, her and Todd proceed to go behind this suburban. They're kissing? Up against the wall, they begin to make out. Oh my God. And that's where business becomes a lot more. Continuing our investigation, Daniel, we are outside of your residence. A few moments later, we see Kelly walk out, get into her vehicle, and she leaves. Short time later, she arrives at this residence. That's Todd's place. Yeah, I recognize that place. They go inside for a few moments, and a short time later, they exit, get into Todd's vehicle, and they leave. As our detectives follow them, they arrive at a restaurant. That's when we see the two of them walking inside, holding hands. Holding hands. They then share a meal together, being very playful, laughing, smiling at each other. She keeps touching his so head. Why is she so touchy? What is going on here? After finishing up their meal, being rather touchy, a while later, he walks her out to his vehicle, opens the door for her, she gets in, and they leave together. That's when they return to Todd's residence and we have the two of them walking inside together. I'm just, I feel betrayed by both. I have intel from my detective that they are at Todd's residence together. Okay. So why don't we get on the road, get out of the cold. Yes. And yes, we'll okay. get some intel from our detective when we get on the location. You okay with yes, that? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm pumped. Daniel, right this way. Let's do this. Okay, man, you know what? We've been sitting here for almost an hour now. This is what I want to do. We got a crew... Ryan, you back there? She's not? Where is she, in the second van? Yes. All right, I'm gonna go grab her. Let's mic her up. Let's send her to the back of the house. Wait right here. I'll be right back. So what I wanna do is, we're gonna walk up this way. I want you to go behind the house and I want you to knock on the door and say that there's a kitten stuck in their tree. And you're gonna lead them out we're gonna be in the back alley. Right when, right when you, right when you walk out is when I'm gonna send him in. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, let's go right this way. Come on. Come on, Daniel. Hello. Hi. Hey. Um, I was just walking back there and I, I saw there's like a little a kitten stuck in a tree right back there. I didn't know if you guys maybe had a ladder or yeah. something I could borrow to try to get it down. It's so small and it's so cold out here that I don't... Yeah, yeah. A kitten. Alright, I think it was this tree right up there. You son of a bitch! What? what the hell? Why would you... Oh my... Pull apart. The... Break it up fast. Kelly! What the hell? Kelly! What the hell? Kelly. What the hell? Hey! Hey! What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing, you doing with what Todd? Todd. Uh, Isn't that your business partner? Yeah. Coming up, the conclusion. They are at Todd's residence together. You son of a bitch! What the hell? What are you doing with what Todd? Todd, uh, isn't that your business partner? Yeah. You don't call me? You don't text me back? Where you been? I saw the footage. What footage? What footage? We're working. Working? Yeah, yeah. Working on what? Kissing? Going on dates? We're working on a cookie. Come on. Kissing, going on dates? No? I'll show you. Come on. What contract are you working on? Just you working on with, with no, Todd? Just, you want, uh, Todd? You, Todd? Kelly, is this what you wanted? Is this the contract that they're working on? No, okay. I'll show you. Can we just go inside, please? Oh. Just stop! Okay, fine. Listen, 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 listen. If we go inside, can you guys talk like civil people? Yeah, hey, here. can every hey can everyone here? Let's go inside. I will show you what I'm talking about. Let's start from the very beginning here. We're working on a contract. We have contracts right here, man. See this? It's for our business. Contract. 
You're touching my girl? You're talking to my yes, girl? Stop. Hey, you guys, you guys, can we all be, can we all just be a little level-headed here and just stop for a second? No, you to me. You came in here. This is what's going on. I have you on tape, making out with Todd here. No, no, no. no. What, what are you talking about? What am I talking Todd, about? Todd, do you remember you these days? Look at this. You're gonna lie to me in my face. Do you guys remember what these I'm talking days? about? We went to the bank. You bank. went to the bank, correct. We went to the bank. Yeah. That's bank. fine. Okay. I have no problem with that. Papers. You got the papers at the bank, I understand that. The, there's one thing I have a little bit of a problem with, and it's right about here. Oh. What was that? What went wrong? What, what happened? What? With this. With you standing next to another man, lying to your boyfriend of three years, saying that you don't know where his business partner is. When you're out making out with him, Going to restaurants, sharing meals. Everybody needs tell to get exactly, out of my house. Tell me exactly okay? what happened, though. Before we leave, Nobody I just want to get your whole story. House. Um, I have another question for you. This right. evening, when she came to your residence and stayed for a few hours, she quit her job so that we she could focus on the job. business. Yeah, focus You're not on you. You gotta focus ahead. on your I business, you man. So what exactly happened between the two of you? Obviously, you've been in business for what? Three months trying to get this yoga studio going. I get it. What went wrong? What happened? happened. What happened? Nothing yes, went wrong. Happened. Okay, yes. look. You. No, no, no. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. What? what? Yes! Let's get one thing straight. Who romanced who and okay. how did it happen? <laughs> Dude. Are you kidding me? You let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. This isn't about a blame game. This isn't about a blame game. Okay, okay, okay. Stop, 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 stop. Todd stop, Kelly, stop. listen, Kelly. Kelly. Unbelievable. Todd Kelly, listen. Look, look, look. It's not a blame game. I just want an answer. That's okay, all. Okay, 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 okay. Just. I'm true. a yoga instructor, all right? Okay. I, I, no, you're a piece of. That's what you are. You're not a man. instructor, man. Don't talk to me like that in my house. Tell me what the f to do. Don't talk to me like that. First, you kiss my girl, and then you're trying to. You talk to me like that again, I'm going to break your face. You're going to break my face. You're going to break my face. I hope you have insurance, you piece of. Continue with what you were okay, going to say. Look. So what happened? If there's any time that you have a chance to tell the truth. Yeah. Okay, let's go outside. Can we go outside? That's fine. Let's get some fresh air. It's getting hot in here. Uh, let's, let's go outside. What? Let's just talk outside. I need you fresh air anyways. Piece of go outside. Just stop. Please. Don't. Don't fight. I'm not going to fight. You signed a contract. I signed a contract? I signed a contract. I signed a contract. Signed a contract. <laughs> this man loves you. And is this what you wanted to happen? People make mistakes. No one's perfect. I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. She made the mistake. This is I didn't make a mistake. Listen, this is, everyone makes you mistakes. Stop. Todd, it's fine. It's, it's, not not about, it's not about the mistake. I'm just trying to figure out why it happened. Okay, you know what, guys? I'm, I'm done. I'm done with this. Done okay. with what? I'm going inside. If you guys don't leave, I'm going to call the cops. Call the cops, man. Call you don't the need to call the cops. I'm calling the cops. Get, just get off my property, okay? Unbelievable. I can't do this. I'm sorry. Baby, I'm sorry. I don't want to. I want to talk Kelly, to you. Kelly, I'm going to have to ask you to get out of the van. You can't come with us. Yeah, I want to go with you. Kelly, get out and of the van. We're going to have to escort I you out of the van. No. I want to talk to you without I can't do this. I want to talk to you without all these people in front of us. Damn it. Why the f did you have to bring them? Because you're a liar. If you you're just know. a liar. That's all you do is lie. So go ahead, be with your yoga man. Go ahead, I leave. Don't be with him. If you want to talk to him with no cameras around, let me get him out of here. Oh let me get him out of here, and then he can come back and choose to talk to you if he wants to. I'm Kelly, not talking to cameras. you, Kelly. Get out of the damn van. Kelly. Go. Just go. I promise I will have him contact you. All right? That's all I can say at this point in time. You need to be held accountable for your mistakes. And that was the biggest one. Dismayed and disgruntled, Daniel vows to strip his life of the suspect. Stay tuned as we reveal how Daniel puts his plans into action. But now, welcome Clyde. Clyde attempts to clear the air surrounding the night he was caught with his pants down by his girlfriend and the cheater's crew. Before the confrontation, uh, me and Megan were in the back seat of the car, you know, doing what you do in the backseat of the car. Uh, I didn't see Jennifer right away. I actually just saw the lights. I was blinded for a minute. I didn't know what was going on. So um, it didn't take long for me to see her because she reached in there and hit me. 
I was pretty surprised to see her. I thought she would be at her mom's house. But at least that's what she said. <laughs> After I saw it was Jennifer and it was cheetahs and I figured out what was going on, I was pretty mad. Uh, I was mad because we started this not even as a relationship. I needed a place to stay. I was trying to get on my feet, and she was willing, you know, to let me stay there. But um, so yeah, I felt like she played me, like to bring the camera crew in and Kyle cheetahs and do all that. And in my mind, we weren't even really boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> Y'all gotta go, man. Watch out. Y'all gotta Excuse me. To me. I need to come back in the next time. Y'all gotta go, man. Nah, who is hey, you? Hey, hold on. Who opened in the door? What is you doing, bro? I have nothing to do with you. You think it's a game, man? No, it's not a game. Think, you think it's, it's not a game? game. Moving forward now, in the emergency room, I, I did a lot of thinking. You know, I thought about how I, how I hurt Jennifer. I thought about how I hurt Megan. And I just thought about my life overall, you know. Um, I kind of just been taken from people, taken, taken, taken. And so I'm just trying to do things new now. I'm trying to find myself. I'm trying to use this experience to get better. And... Um, I don't know, I take it one day at a time, man, because it could have been worse. I mean, this is all I got, but I could have nothing, you know? And so I, I, I learned my lesson in that. Following the confrontation, Daniel Cohen tells cheaters of the relationship's disillusion, both romantically and professionally. However, David still feels perplexed at the suspect's actions. Daniel temporarily resides in a hotel room until he can find another home. When questioned by Cheater's producers, the suspect, Kelly Delgado, takes absolutely no responsibility for the collapse of her relationship. Instead, Delgado blames her companion for imposing the affair. Todd Menzer, now unemployed and looking for both work and a new girlfriend, makes the decision when we first started out, he would take me out to eat at least three three times a week, go to the movies, hang out. He would always want to be around me. And then all of a sudden, you know, I asked him to take me out one night, and he was like, well, I can't tonight. And then I noticed that was going on for about a month. And then, you know, just little stuff that he had started doing that I had noticed that, you know, he had stopped doing for me. Quinn, age 45. An office manager accused of mishandling his relationship. Briefed by Dochelle on the suspect's work schedule, Cheaters deploys a squad of covert professionals to surround the building where Quinn works. Sometime in the afternoon, the alleged cheater leaves in his vehicle. Shadowed across town by Cheaters' pros, Quinn arrives at a restaurant where he meets an unknown female. The suspect greets his lady friend with a kiss and a hug. Hand in hand, Quinn and his lunch date entered the establishment. The other day, I go out to my truck to find, look for my flip-flops, and I find this morning after pill, and then it's empty. I just found this Wednesday, and today is Friday, and it's been taken. So he had sex with somebody in the last 72 hours, and he don't even have sex with me. He tell me he don't want to have sex with me. He brush it off, or when we do have sex, you know, it's it's real quick, or he quit, or whatever, telling me his back hurt and all that. But you got this? No, this is unacceptable. I will not tolerate this. I know he's somebody. I just need to know who she is. Inside, the suspect and his mysterious mistress enjoy a cozy meal. Sometime later, Quinn and his companion exit the building, carrying out the leftovers. The suspect puts his paramour into her sedan, Quinn makes sure his meal gets tucked safely away. Almost an afterthought, the suspect walks over to give his lover a goodbye kiss. 
As the unknown woman drives away, Quinn gets into his car and drives home, ending this day of surveillance. When I catch him in this lot, all hell is gonna break loose. That pill was the last straw. I know he somebody. I'm just here to find out who it is and how long it's been going on, because I'm done. I am done. I'm a good woman. I make my own money. I have my own house. I got my own. I don't need him there. So whoever he messing with, that's who he need to be with, because I don't play with no man at all. So when I find him, it's going down. Aware of the suspect's work schedule, the cheater's team maintains the stakeout on Quinn's workplace. Late in the day, the errant Romeo leaves work and walks down the street, meeting the same woman from previous surveillance, now identified as Michelle. Arms wrapped around each other, Quinn and Michelle cross the lot. The illicit pair enter the sandwich shop. The suspect and his date sit on a mostly empty patio. The suspect then begins checking out his companion's attributes. Sometime later, Quinn escorts his lady to her vehicle. Catching a ride back to the office allows the suspect to spend more time with his companion. Quinn leans into the driver's side window to kiss Michelle goodbye. Cheater's agents wrap it up for the day and the suspect heads back to work. With the pattern established, Cheater's detectives are none too surprised when Quinn leaves the office building the next day. The suspect gets into his car and heads across town. A Cheater's mobile unit follows him to a restaurant. Michelle stands outside waiting for the suspect, whom he greets with an intimate kiss. Inside, Quinn downs a beer and gets a little frisky with Michelle. After a while, the double-dealing duo finish their refreshment, and Quinn escorts his cortesian to her vehicle. He then spends a few minutes in Michelle's arms, giving her an almost endless stream of kisses. Finally, Michelle breaks away, climbs into her car, and starts the engine. Quinn then walks to his own vehicle. As the two drive their separate ways, the cheater's team heads back to headquarters to prep the case files for Dochelle. Coming up, the confrontation. Now that detectives assemble video footage of the suspect's clandestine affair, Cheaters contacts Dochel. Fearing the worst, Dochel agrees to meet for an alarming briefing. Dochelle, the first thing I'd like to say is thank you for coming out this afternoon. Dochelle, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. Yes. And we have come up with some findings. My question is, are you prepared to see that? Yes. All right. All right, Dochelle, we begin our investigation outside of Quinn's workplace. A few moments later, we see him leaving work. As our detectives follow Quinn, he drives for some distance, and he arrives at a restaurant. He parks his car, he gets out. That's when we see him approach this red vehicle. This female gets out, embraces with a hug, he kisses her on the cheek, and he opens the door for her. They go inside of the restaurant. They sit together, share a meal. She puts her hand on his back. Okay, well, continuing on after finishing their meal together, he escorts her out to her vehicle and he opens the door for her as she gets into the driver's seat. Well, after closing the door for this complete stranger and taking her to lunch, he proceeds to get in his vehicle. But before he does, he sends her off with a kiss, goodbye. On this day of our investigation, we are outside of Quinn's workplace. A few moments later, we see Quinn emerge. He walks outside, he gets into your car, and he leaves. That's when we see him park at a restaurant. We see this girl get out dressed rather fancy. He's in a button down as well. They embrace like a couple that's been together for some time with a kiss. You probably have been messing with a for a while. Let We're gonna find, find that out. out. Mm -hmm. They go into this restaurant, he grabs a beer, and they have a couple drinks. That's when we see him grabbing on this girl, kissing her again on the cheek. He's doing a lot of things that mm -hmm. normal people would not do, be doing. No, not he ain't did this with me in a while. What you're about to hear is the phone call he receives while he's inside the restaurant with this complete stranger. Tell me if you remember this at all. Okay. Yeah, I was going straight in, watch a movie or something. I don't want to watch no 
all extra movies, so we have to watch something that we're missing. Oh, that's true. I mean, it's coming when we get out. All right, I love you. All right, I love you. Bye. 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 After hitting up the phone, he walks back inside with this complete stranger telling you I love you, saying I love you to you. After finishing up their drinks and their meal, they exit together. He once again walks this woman to her car, embraces her like she's been his for a long time. And this is how this man should be treating you, not a complete stranger. Right. My question for you is, are you prepared to go confront him? Oh yeah, I'm ready. Then right this way. Oh, there's a detective right there. If he tries to do anything, it's just he's he's caught dead to rights. Mr. Gomez, how are you, man? Doing good, good. Good, good, good. All right. When you walk into the restaurant, they're to the left. All right. Let's Great. go. Let's go. Now. Everyone out. work he met up with that same female what is mother fuck you back so bitch you thought you were pregnant I know I'm brown. let me talk to you I got a question man yeah. who, who is this girl that you're with yeah explain this boy man baby that's just now somebody I'm with I'm just somebody I'm right here a person gonna tell you what they want to hear he ain't okay? told me nothing about okay, no other you know female that? Did he, did he, he ain't told me okay, nothing about that. Should, you should have asked him that so he could be straight of up. Of course, he wasn't. See, look how it ended. Yeah, that's just something I with, man. For you what? You know I love you, baby. So, man, we've been together three mother years, and this the I get? Hell no. The mm. one I want to be No, with. no you don't. But what'd you tell her? Did you tell her you had a girlfriend? Like no, you he ain't told me. Let's go find out. Should we go ask her? You all right, ain't you? I'm good. You all I'm right? Good. You I'm willing good. to just stay right here? I'm good. Stay right here? Did you know? I did did no you take idea. this? Yeah. So you time. were pregnant? No. Okay, so my tube's tied, baby. My tube's tied. It's another motherfucker in the mix. It's another motherfucker. No, why is she like, why is she a hoe? Well, you were sitting up there kissing on him. No? Yeah, you kiss this I'm bitch in the mouth. This hoe can have her up his head and mother. I'm like, sitting up there looking at you, but you've been with her three years, and got more than that. Why would you do one like that? That's wrong. I know you ain't got time. Brown? Yeah, my, my That's bad. Sweet Brown, baby. Sweet How you doing? Good. What's your name? Who is you? Sweet Brown, baby. Sweet Brown? Ain't nobody got time for this. Who is Sweet Brown? Um, I'm that lady that you know Man, don't you want. You, okay, you I know, understand that. You try, no, I don't see, no. Oh, Lord, it's a mess. No mother mo, come get your. Do you remember this day? Entire yes. You remember that day? You do. Yeah, you touching on this bitch. You kissing this bitch in her mother mouth. They're kissing on her sucking. You don't know this whole suck one out. Then you bringing that home to me. You got me. I love you, baby. Who does that? Entire yes. Where is she? Where's the other one? She's leaving right there. I want to go. I'm gonna go get her. I want to go get some some answers from her. Excuse me. Hey, before you leave, I just got a quick question for you. Did he tell you he had a girlfriend? No, he did not. He didn't tell you any of that? No. I didn't see nothing of me, ain't man. Got time. Ain't nobody got time. I'm through. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got Oh, good. I think that, that girl should Let get some answers. Tell her, yeah, tell, tell her so she's a little bit more at ease because he's just lying to her, and I don't think that's very fair. You can park right here. We'll watch your car. You're going to do it like that? You're going to do it? This big boy.
Boy Swag Entertainment, man. Okay. You gonna do it like that? I'll put your ass on the map. You ain't put a mother thing on the map, baby. I, I had my own before you came. So don't sit up and holler. You done did a bitch ass man, thing for me. This big boy bitch, swag you ain't ever the piss in the window throw the when I got with you. Can't you. Bitch, I made you. This is what I paid for. And you tell your mother ass. Bitch. I got Michelle right here, that other girl. He completely lied to her and played her. Where is she? She's That's right there. That's what she, She's right there. She didn't slap you. I'm a slap. Got on with that. Didn't say, a, didn't say a word that she had a girlfriend or any. So he lying to he lied you too. To you. He lying to me. I ain't got to do with that shit. And swank. She you know what I'm saying? I'm an instant. I'm him. Nah, she touched me. When I first walked up, she put her hands on okay. my Hey, hey, I'm trying to get out the way. I'm just trying to get I'm out ready. the way. Because I'm ready. I'm ready too. What you want to do? That's, that's Sweet Brown right there. Don't got me, you Where did you come from? I just came from nowhere. I, I don't like you. He didn't got caught in this game. He ain't leaving. got this swag no more. He's leaving in her car, too. Yeah, he's leaving in her car. I got a question, though. Hey, would you have time to possibly come out and f out, maybe, if we need it? Yes, you will. Let's do it. All right, cool. I'll get a hold of you. Come on. Clark Gable with Cheaters, by the way. Sweet Brown. It's a pleasure to meet you. All right. Hey, thank you for being here. Thanks for Any woman support, good support. All right. After the turbulent encounter, Dochelle Marshall makes a few tough decisions concerning her wayward boyfriend's actions. Later, Cheaters updates you on her verdict. But now, Patrick comes forward to give a fresh perspective on the afternoon he was caught with another woman on Cheaters. Well, uh, before the confrontation, Janie and I were at the pharmacy. We were picking up Annette's meds, and I was also picking up uh, some personal medication for myself um, that was going to be used with Janie later that afternoon. Um, of course, all that changed when Annette came around the corner with um, the cheater's cameras, and one minute I'm sitting there having a, a good time. A minute later, I'm frozen stiff because I know I've just gotten caught and I'm being confronted by the person I love who I'm basically tearing their heart out. What in the hell are you doing? I'm uh, waiting on your prescriptions. Oh, really? And who is this? She's a friend of mine. She's a, friend. a friend. Yeah. A friend goes with you to pick up my prescriptions. Initially, wasn't planning on this relationship being any more than a friendship, but then when I kind of felt like I wanted to go further, um, I told Janie that Annette and I had, a, I had an agreement um, that because we knew that she was so sick and, and we didn't have much, she didn't have much time and, and I had needs that weren't being fulfilled, we had an agreement that um, 
I could, I guess, see other women. You know, it wasn't gonna be a big deal to her. And so I just told Janie that we had this, like, open agreement. He told me that y'all had some sort of arrangement made. I can't believe that you told her that you have an arrangement. No, the arrangement is, is I have stage four cancer and he's my caregiver and I stay home a lot and I'm finding out that you have extracurricular activities you're not telling me about. Sorry, I just, I've been lonely and bored at home and I didn't sign up for all this. Patrick, do you think I signed up for cancer? I mean, I knew, I knew it was wrong what I was doing because she was sick and all and we've been married for so long. But it took that confrontation to make me realize, yeah, I really need to get my stuff together. Um, and um, I've been working really hard to try to regain that trust. Um, I think in some ways I've mended that a little bit, but I've still got a ways to go. Not a woman to give up so easy, Dochelle Marshall decides to give the suspect another chance. Hoping to start fresh, Dochelle seeks couple support through her church. As for his responsibility in the affair, the suspect Quinn confirms that Dochelle offered him a second chance with a few conditions. Quinn's companion, Michelle. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Well, he's been a little bit more distant lately. Like, um, I just feel like he just wants to be all business with me. Like, maybe he's just around still for stage time, um, you know, using this as a vessel to further his comedy career. But he's kind of washed up. I, he's, you know, I've been out a lot, and he's been passive aggressive toward me a lot. Um, yeah, he's not taking me out. He's not, you know, um, being affectionate toward me. It's, you know, something's going on. Dave Beckers, age 45, a part-time comic suspected of turning his relationship into a bad joke. Cheaters deploys a squad to stake out the home Jess shares with the suspect. Just after sundown, Beggars and Jess leave the residence, followed tightly by a Cheaters mobile unit. The client and her boyfriend drive across town to a comedy club. The pair enter the building. Inside, Beggars bellies up to the bar as Jess talks to a few people in the lobby. While Jess grabs a table for them, the suspect stays at the bar. An unknown female, the bartender, walks over to the suspect's spot and begins chatting with him. Well, I hear a lot of rumors when I'm out of town that Dave's talking to other girls around the comedy clubs, and, you know, I don't want to jump to conclusions and believe them. I know... People could be petty, especially when it comes to other people becoming successful. And um, when I come back home from being on the road, I try my best to connect with him, you know, to catch up, go out, have fun. But he doesn't want to do that. He always tells me, oh, well, you seem tired, so I'm going to go off and do my own thing. And he doesn't say where he's going. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to fight with him. I just want to... I just want to catch up and, you know, and, you know, nurture our relationship further. And he's just, he's up to something. Dave continues to smooze with the pretty barmaid for a short while. And after a few moments, the unknown female steps out from behind the bar and beggars follows her outside. On the patio, the suspect and his sexy bartender continue the conversation. Beggars plays with a woman's hair as they talk. Finally, the bartender finishes her cigarette. Jess then arrives, interrupting the conversation. Snagging her guy, Jess and beggars finally leave. We have spent five years together. We used to be each other's number one fans. We used to really support each other. And, you know, sometimes he's still sweet to me. It happens very, very far in between periods of arguing, but sometimes he tells me I'm great, I love you, and that just makes me think, well, what, what did you do? Like, why are you trying to finesse me like this? And it's just, it's not the Dave that I, you know, built my life with for these last few years. No, if Dave's cheating on me, I am not forgiving him. He is out, I am throwing all of his stuff to the street, and I will never let him work in the clubs with me again. 
Cheetah's detectives keep vigil over Jess and the suspect's residence. Sometime later, agents spot Beggars as he leaves home. A mobile unit tails him across town to a strip mall parking lot. Beggars gets out and waits a few minutes. Shortly, the pretty bartender from previous surveillance, now identified only as Stormy, arrives in her SUV. Beggars takes Stormy's purse, pops the trunk of his own vehicle, and retrieves what can only be described as an art piece. The unlikely duo stroll to a nearby restaurant for a quick bite. On the patio, Beggars romantically feeds his lunch day the bite of his own dish. A short while later, having finished their repast, Beggars and Stormy walk around the area to an art house. A few minutes later, the pair leave the art house without Beggars' art piece. The suspect returns his companion to her vehicle and leaves, ending this day of surveillance. With intel from Jess that she left town on business, Cheater's agents stick to the game plan of staking out the residence. After dark, operatives watch as Beggars exits. The trailing Cheater squad notes the suspect takes the known path to the comedy club. Beggars enters the building, and guess who he meets? Stormy, of course. They converse at a table for a bit before entering the stage area. Once inside, Beggars commences to do his stand-up routine in front of an almost empty room. After his bit finishes, Beggars and Stormy leave the club. The suspect and his hot date traipse back to his parked car. The lovers get into the vehicle and take the familiar route back to his residence. Beggars escort Stormy into the dwelling he shares with Jess. Footage provided by one of two interior cameras placed by Jess shows the impious sweethearts sharing an impetuous kiss. Stormy steps into another room as the suspect sits down. When the young hottie returns, she obviously has an interesting evening planned, being that she's stripped down to a thong and carries a pair of handcuffs. Stormy climbs into the suspect's lap for a few minutes, and eventually Stormy leads Beggars to the kitchen area. The bartender handcuffs the suspect to a beam supporting the kitchen ceiling. With Beggars hanging by his arms, Stormy proceeds to kiss and fondle him. However, the joke lies on the suspect as Cheaters ties up the case for a betrayed Jess. Coming up, The Confrontation. With all evidence pointing to infidelity firmly established, Cheaters requests a meeting with Jess to examine the sorrowful information. Summoning all her stoic courage, Jess determines to learn the truth. Jess, first thing I'd like to say is um, thank you for coming out this evening. I understand that you've been going through a lot. As you know, we have conducted our investigation, Jess. My question for you is, are you prepared to see the evidence that we have come up with? Yes. OK, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Jess, we begin our investigation outside of your residence. We see Dave emerge. He walks over to his vehicle and he gets inside. He has something in his hand. Not really sure what that was, but it looked like a form of some sculpture. Yeah, he does this weird thing with dolls. Okay. Well, he leaves and then he arrives at a parking lot. We see him get out of his vehicle. He closes the door. Uh -huh. A few moments later, that blonde girl pulls up uh -huh. and we see Dave go to the back of his trunk and pull out that doll sculpture. And they walk away together. That's when we see them go across the way and they arrive at a restaurant. Dave opens up the door for her, they walk inside, sit at the outdoor patio and share a meal. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize her? Yeah, that's Stormy. That's Stormy? Yeah. Does this seem strange to you at this point? No, we, we are with, we're all friends. Okay. It's, you know. After finishing up their meal, they return to that parking lot. That's when we see Dave say goodbye to Stormy. He gets into his vehicle and he leaves. On this day, as our detectives follow Dave, he arrives at the comedy club. Okay. He parks, gets out of his vehicle, and he walks inside. That's when we see him okay. go sit out on the patio with Stormy. We then see Dave doing his bit up on the stage while Stormy watches. After he finishes up, she hands him the keys to his car. Mm -hmm. They walk out together, and mm -hmm. they leave together. As our detectives follow Dave, he then arrives back at your residence. Mm -hmm. 
we see the two of them walk inside holding hands and that's when he points out his sculpture of doll collections Whoa. and she lays a kiss they on Dave. They just kiss? They did. Dave then proceeds to sit on the chair. Whoa. She goes into the bathroom, comes out completely topless with her underwear on only. Oh my gosh. And a pair of handcuffs. That's my friend. This That's is, my chair. You recall that surveillance equipment that we installed in your house when we began this oh, whole yeah, process? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, uh -huh. we had a hidden audio conversation we picked up, and uh -huh. that's what you're about to listen to. She's gone. She's in Seattle. She is not coming back. We know it's funny. I was uh, jealous of her getting that kid, and now I'm like, huh, in Seattle, a bunch of sweaty hippies, or here, in my incredibly comfortable chair, with a gorgeous stone in my lap of handcuffs. That should be here in Seattle. You're such a nice I could just strangle her right now. I completely like, understand that. Like we have, this is five years of my life with my friend. I, I'm, I feel like I'm gonna be sick. After finishing yeah. up that little conversation, Dave stands up, Stormy takes him over to the rafter in the house, handcuffs him, begins to make out with him, begins to kiss him multiple times. Whoa. And you could only imagine what else happens. Jess, I think you've seen enough. At this point in time, why don't we get in the vans and get on the road? We can get to that comedy club. They're there together. Are you ready to bust, Dave? I'm ready to bust, and Dave. Mm -hmm. All right. Both of them. Right this way, please. Let's do this. Excuse us. Go, 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 go. Coming up, the conclusion. We can get to that comedy club. They're there together. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you are my friend. I don't care about you. You stabbed me on the camera. Are you copying that? Oh. 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 Go, take it. Go, is he shooting you with this. Yeah, that's Stormy, the bartender here. My boyfriend of five years. Talk to me like that. Who do you think you, you are? You what me? is this? You're How do you slap the out of me? Of course I did. Look at you buying this little freaking Mustang like a Frisco mom. Oh my, oh my gosh, that wasn't enough for your midlife crisis? You had to go pretty much your daughter? That's disgusting. Yeah. 
her, both of them. Davey, I think, you, I think you need to take a deep yeah. breath and relax. All right, listen, you guys had a great relationship and then something went wrong. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she's gone a lot, I understand that, but why wouldn't you just communicate that to her in the first place and just say, hey, listen, sweetie, you're gone so much. Did you not see how she reacted? Did you not see how she reacted? Okay, she beat the shit out of me in front of the cameras. If I would have told her any of that would have happened, she would have beat the shit out of me then. Dude, you got some so issues, either. man, you got some Anger issues, Why does seriously. she have it? Well, because she's angry because you cheated on her. I mean, yes. I could show you if you want to see it again. I'm good. I'm I'm fine. I and you made her one of your doll oh, yeah, sculptures. No. That looked pretty near and dear. You yeah, made... you're 40 playing with dolls. That's, okay. that's There we go. There we go. That's great. awesome. Yeah. Do you think that's it would have awesome. been a better idea to maybe get like a sex doll to play with instead of a real one? Dave, you two were spending a lot of time I together. Know. I know. I was there. That's me. I know. You don't have to show me, okay? But why did you do that? Why did I do it? Yeah hot okay and she's gone that's why i did it what would you do look at that look at that that's amazing that's beautiful and this is gone all the time you know don't, i would be honest with away. my artistic girlfriend and tell her how i truly feel instead of lying and cheating on her thank you well guess what it's done okay it's over it's done so it's over now that you've screwed up yeah it's over now that she beat, it's over now that she beat out of me so it's over your so face is happy. bleeding and i can't happy. even recognize yeah, yeah, you yeah, Dave. Uh -huh, it's so uh -huh. terrible i can't wait to go Cops, it's gonna be awesome. Really, Dave, that's all you have to say instead of apologizing. What else do you want me to say? Apologize. What? No, I'm gonna apologize. She beat the out of me. What the am I gonna say to her? Hit me again. You, I would say sorry. What do you want to do? This is ultimately up to you. Do you feel like you've gotten what you've needed? Um, yeah, I've gotten what I needed. Mm -hmm. Dot com. Completely disgusted by her boyfriend's atrocious behavior, Jess realizes she has a difficult decision to make. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals her plan for the future. But now, Cheaters welcomes Sarah Reed. Sarah comes forward to clear up how her relationship with her husband's best friend was unveiled on Cheaters. When we were caught, I was definitely embarrassed. Um, not only in my actions, but just the confrontation in itself was just it was in a public place, so it was kind of embarrassing having so many people staring at us and sort of knowing what we did without knowing the backstory behind it. What are you doing, man? Oh, okay, calm down. My wife's here. You're with my wife, yeah? We're just, just having, having a pie. Five. Just having a pie, having a couple of beers. Is it nice? Is it nice? It's nice! It's him! Why would you do this to your best friend? Why would you do this to your husband? What are you doing? Simon, what are you doing? Good. Good. Hanging with a beer. What are you doing? Having some pie. Right. Why would you do this to your friend, Chris? Well, he did, he what did I say? What did I say? Oh, I didn't say anything. We haven't done anything. We're, eating, we're literally eating pie. We haven't I've done anything. I've seen your videos. I've seen what you've been up to. There's no videos. I've seen there's no videos. Simon, there's I've no videos. It. When I started seeing Chris, it really was not intentional, um, I, the, the act of cheating. It just kind of slowly progressed. He came to stay with Simon and I and we ended up at first just hanging out as friends and then kind of one thing led to another and it progressed and progressed. And um, then we ended up getting together. Um, I, we knew it was wrong at the time, but just because Simon and Chris had been friends for so long and Chris, Simon and I were married, it just made for a really sort of bizarre love triangle. You took my heart, you sliced it open, you shoved up my ass and me. That's how bad it is. Like, don't come home. Find a way home, f yourself, go f yourself, Sign peace out. F you guys. F you. F you. You know what? F you. F you, man. Yeah. What's up? Give me what's up. Stop, 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 stop. 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 The relationship with Chris um, has actually gone beyond my expectations. And now that I'm divorced, we actually are together. And we are actually planning on getting married ourselves in, within the next year or so. We just kind of realized that we're more compatible. Um, we're, we're into the same things, the same music. We both are very social and we enjoy um, spending time with each other.
Following the confrontation, Jess Allen realizes her comedy partner deserves to be left alone. Jess has also broken off the friendship she once had with the suspect's companion. For his part in the whole ordeal, Dave Beggars refuses to take any responsibility. When questioned by Cheater's producers, the suspect claims, I can't believe she'd further her career by ruining mine the way she did. Jess didn't have to pull all this out in the open. Made me look like an ass in my own hangout. I can't even go back in there without getting laughed off stage. The suspect's companion, Stormy, 